<clears throat> Christmas time. Are we live? Jenny's off and fine. <laughs> She's got trains for a good time. With coal on the boiler and smoke in the stack. We'll enjoy it when they're on the track. Christmas <coughs> time at Monday Club. I've got no more words, <coughs> and this is a bit of a flub. Go for it, Jen. You might as well stop now. So, hello to everyone, and first up today, a big, big thank you to George Botterini for the very generous donation of $10 on the Super Chat. Thank you ever so much for that. That is always really, really welcome, because it, it helps us to keep making the videos that you guys want to thank see on so the channel. So, thank you ever so much for that. I'd also like to wish Garthian, um, also known as Adele Williams, a speedy recovery. I know he's been ill today, so um, a speedy, speedy recovery to Garthian. If you're in the chat uh, today, and uh, we will have the, um, the the TARDIS will be somewhere. Um, so I can see it. <coughs> yeah, actually, I'm just looking. If I it's not on that. Uh, it's not on that. <coughs> yes, just give everyone a quick subtle uh, hint. A quick hint of where it is, Jen. Has anybody spotted it yet? So I can sit back to where I was. Sit back up. Right, okay, so um, uh, hopefully everybody's okay. Um, also, a big, big thank you to Patrick for a very, very generous uh, Christmas gift. Thank you so much, a, Sir Patrick Furlong. A limited edition third ep Thunderbirds episode, Danger at, uh, what's it? Danger at Ocean Deep. Thank you ever so much for that. So we're going to find a place on the cool wall downstairs for that. But let's see, who have we got in? Um, first up, we have got um, Mini West Aston Junction, Keith Pointer, Cooper and District Model Railway Club, Mark Wilson, David Cook, Simon Trains Model Railway Showcase, Pete Clark, Josh's Train Room, Naive Gage, who wants to hear two solid hours of Zoe singing. Are you a masochist by any chance? Southern Train Girl, hi to you. Even I don't uh, want to hear two hours of Penn singing, Junction, ma uh, the Map of the Dragon Railways, Bang Got You Junction, Carl Braund, Ian Turvey, uh, who else we've got? Flymo Chairman 1, 57305 Northern Princess, John Holding, uh, Patrick Furling, Furling uh, Patrick Furlong is in, so um, thank you ever so much, Patrick, for this. It arrived safely today. Thank you so, so much. Um, Peter Reed, Zoe's voice gets better every week. Why, have you got the volume down or something? I knew you were going to say Tim that. J.D. Dowd, hi to you. West London Railway. Um, George Botterini says, no sound. <laughs> and you checked, didn't you? I did check. Yeah, that's naughty, that is. We did start with no mm. sound because I wasn't sure we were on. So yeah. I didn't start singing immediately. Ham Shackleton, Andrew Boone, Leslie Gilpin... Uh, and yes, there's some issue with YouTube and links posted. Uh, the person who posts them sees them, but nobody else does. And, and we don't know what that's about. Uh, David Cook, um, say Paul Bottrill. Um, who else have we got? Leamington Station, uh, Pete Clark, Whamgock, Hal McLean, um, the Angel Share Model Railways, uh, Naive Gage, Pete Clark. Uh, Naive Gage, Ham Shackleton, Leslie Gilpin, Clive Kobold, um, who else have we got? A.D. Pullen, um, Game Hammer Classic Gaming, Ace K.A. The Cupboard Monkey. Um, who else have we got? I did see a few other names. Mark Wilson, Evening mid David Clark, um, Patrick Ling. Oops, no, I, I've just broken it. You've broken it already. I've broken... Oh, I pressed the wrong button and now it's broken. This is your fault. Yeah, hold hold on, hold on. We can we can fix this. Um right. Uh can we force it to come back? I, I don't believe this. Which one do I have to press? We have to turn all four of those up there off. How do I do that? The little buttons. You press and hold until the blue light goes out. What little buttons? On the top. Do you want me to come over to it? Sorry, guys. We've got. I don't know where they are. Right. Okay. Well, look. <coughs> Jenny, you broke everything. It's I, your I fault. Did, yeah, yeah. It's your fault. No, you, it's your you fault. did this. You're naughty. You're a naughty girl. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Jenny, you did this. Yes, you did. 
It's not my fault. I did not press anything. You pressed the buttons. So, no. <coughs> right, okay, people. We're Connor's going to... Moss says, have you tried turning it off and then on again? Well, that's what we're doing. Right, what we need to do now is cycle through. So, you'll just see a black screen until I have cycled through. And then I'm going to go back to uh, this one. And then I'm going to turn them all back on. And... Oh, West London Railway, always looking on the bright side, says, well, at least we get a full screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's... Um, this is... Uh, is that actually turned on? Well, I don't know. I can see a blue light on that one. You've just turned it off. Is it come on? Blue light is on. Okay, so, if I now go to here... Don't get some off the railway, it's not my fault, says the person swinging the lightsaber. Yeah, it wasn't my fault, Jenny did it. It's Jenny's fault. And I'm back. Right, let's just cycle through and make sure. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Yeah. You did this on purpose just to make yourself look silly. Oh, no, that works. Oh, my word. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my word. So, <coughs> excuse oh, me. Oh, my goodness. Um, is uh, ISMZX says, thank you, Jenny and the crew, for all the fun this year. Oh wow! Thank you ever so much for fifty pounds. That is that is amazingly generous. Thank, thank you, you so ever much. so much for that. And uh, as we always say, never never feel obliged to give anything on the super chat. But uh, of course, people who do, it is so so welcome because it does help uh, the channel to be able to produce videos. So thank you ever thank so, you much so much for that. That is incredibly generous of you. And hi, Zach Farnworth. A uh, big hello to Zach Farnworth as well. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Penn Junction, Jay, um, <clears throat> so Hel McLean, uh, Cottesmore, who says whoever smelt it dealt it. Yes, she's forever smelling smelling uh, uh, guffs. So um, there you Jen, are. Jen is just doing a, a quick thing, a, a quick piece to camera where she's lying. Jen has this thing where she, no, no, uh, no. she claims guff, that people she guff. doesn't like Look, smell this person bombs. here, this person here is this. the guff lord. Right. And that's just her thing. So, Manchin okay. 1956 says, the NHL <laughs> have realigned the divisions. Tampa Bay are now in Central Division. Hey, what? They just do, you know, they see I'm coming. They see I'm starting to learn who's where and uh, <clears throat> who plays who. And then they move them around. Mm. Uh, we've got Ben's Valley Railway. Says, so great to see professionals at work. Oh, where, where, where? Let us know. We'll go and have a look. Uh, Liam at New Mills Model Railway. I get everybody's quite impressed um, by uh, uh, ISMZX. Um, that really generous uh, donation on the on the super chat. Thank yes, you so uh, so much for that. Uh, also seeing New Junction in. Big hello to you, Bagnell Dave, uh, Robert Ward. Um, oh sure. my goodness! Thank you oh, so wow. much, friends. Oh, oh, you didn't have to. But um, where, Ted Knott as well says, Jenny, do you have a Class 66 Tom Moore? I don't, unfortunately. Oh Keith Pointer goodness. says, I just got my Christmas prize. NCB Loco from the Canuck Railway Club. So cool. Brilliant. Uh, hello, Philip Page. And Simon Train's Model Railway Showcase says, Merry Christmas to Jenny and Zoe. And thank you for the Monday Club and the content you post on your channel. Well, thank you ever so much. That is incredibly generous of you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I, I'm I'm blown away here. People are, are really getting quite generous. Um, also, don't forget to like the stream and share it as well. Share it on social media, and let's see if we can get a record turnout for the uh, the theme that won the poll on the Jenny Monday Club uh, Facebook page was Christmas. So we did have a Christmassy picture. Um, Garthian is here. Oh, a big hello to Garthian. Great to see you. Um, DL Warren as well. Uh, Matthew Dunmo as well. Um, says, says uh, there's been a derailing. I'm not, I don't what, 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 what? Where? Uh, a derailing? I don't see anything. Um, unless he means the ones that are on the shuttle. There's two two trains on a shuttle. What's that grey one in the back in front of the shuttle? What, the coach? Yeah. It's just a coach. Okay. It, it's just sat there doing its own thing. It's, it's you know, don't worry, everything's chill. Uh, but I don't no, see a derailed one. We can't see anything that's derailed. I can only assume that uh, might be the, there's two trains on a shuttle. Uh, oh, the, thank you so much, Richard. Uh, hello, Richard Brighton says, uh, happy Christmas from everyone in Settle. Um, Wardle Road, hi to you. Gosh, there's loads of people in Mark Whitehouse. You've got no Jen. live pictures. 
Jen, look. Oh, wow. Look. Yes. I, I'm so far. Oh, my word. Richard Brighton, thank you ever so much, has just given £10 on the Super Chat. Gosh, it's going wild tonight, isn't it? And it's a great turnout. It's great to see all you guys. Trying to read out loads of the names. Um, Mike and Sue Budham Junction, Henry's Transport Adventures and Beyond. Um, but gosh, um, Somerset Andy as well. I'm, I'm sh I was sure I'd seen you in the chat as well. Um, Wardle Road says, I'm getting nothing for Christmas. A house costing me enough. Oh, God, don't tell me about it. You got a it. house. Yeah, <laughs> who gave you a house? Um, got John A. Dawson from Canada. Uh, Patrick Furlong. Um, Haven Rail, happy Christmas to you. We got, um, it, it's great. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, the theme. Oh, I was talking about the theme. So we've got a Christmas theme, but I don't really have anything that's Christmassy apart from the Christmas diorama that you'll have seen in the thumbnail, possibly, if you came uh, just direct through YouTube. Um, so essentially, if you want to um, send your videos in to be played at, uh, towards the end of the stream, uh, we're always happy to receive uh, links to people's videos. So uh, generally, if people were wanting to do a Christmas themed video, um, that's a good opportunity to do it. There is actually, I think I'm just looking to see, yes, it is still there. I've got a Santa's little helper, uh, a sexy Santa's helper on the layout that's left over from a project. You know where yes, it this is. is our, this is our festive uh, bit. So uh, the monkey is just moving the monkey cam. So our token festive is you need to be further round. There um, they are. <laughs> I won't focus in on them. Unfortunately, yes, uh, probably, like the, uh, probably as well. You be careful now. I don't want to just... There they are. So um, move to your right a little bit. Um, you're very good at getting them behind the chat. So we've got best. zombies and sexy Santa's helper you can see kneeling down there. Right, okay, enough of that. Uh, <laughs> Enough of that sort of thing. <laughs> yes. Right. Come on, come on, calm down. Let let stop being silly. Um, but certainly, um, it's um, uh, we're really looking forward to seeing what some of you guys uh, may have come up with. You send them. We'll send a link to the U a URL link to Zoe at zoerobinson dot com, and that Zoe spelt the European way, just Z O E. What? Oh. Um, I've just been told I need to... So yes, to... If, you, uh, if you have uh, your video sent the URL, that's the uh, web address, to uh, zoe at zoerobinson.com because then we will uh, be able to show them. Uh, and we'll be doing that uh, in the sort of the last half an hour of the show. Depending yeah. on if we get loads in, we might start before or, or run over a little bit longer. So let me Matthew just... Matthew Dunmo says, uh, my Christmas present to myself this year is a new Hornby packet. Also, I've got to wait Ooh. until I move to get it out of the box. Oh, uh, oh Mark Mike Wilson from Putnam Junction. Thank you so much. Happy Christmas to you two from the Gosh, two of us. It, it's coming oh in thick and fast. Thank you um, so much. I very quickly thank Mark Wilson who sent ten pounds on the um, PayPal.me link. So thank you ever so much to say thanks for all this year's streams, Middock. <laughs> oh my god. So thank you ever so much for that. Let me try and get back to the stream. It's coming in thick and fast now. Um, Simon Trains Model Railway says there's no why in Zoe. Why? <laughs> <laughs> We've been asking for quite some time, but Mike and Sue Putnam Junction, thank you ever so much for sending £20 on the Super Chat. Happy Christmas to two of you from the two of us. Thanks for all the fun. Wow. This is, it's, I, I'm, I'm speechless. This is, they're coming You're in. You're not. Fun. You're still talking. You lying <laughs> liar who lies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, oh, and I've lost my place now. Um, J94 says, Hi Jenny, just wondering, are callless motors and locomotives reliable? Generally speaking, yes. Uh, the only thing I've heard about callless locomotive motors is that they can be affected if you are, for example, using feedback controllers on DC. Um, I've heard it said that um, they can cause damage to callless motors. I'm not entirely sure how, but I know certainly, for example, the um, the really cheap Hornby train set controllers 
can be quite finicky. Oh my goodness, oh, thank what? you so much, Haven Mail. Oh, thank you it ever so much. You have made lockdown so much more bearable. Merry oh, well, Christmas. thank you ever so much. And I'm glad some of you think she's made it more bearable because I've got to live with her. Oh, I don't get to go anywhere. <laughs> thank you ever so much, Haven Rail, for a very generous £10. And yet, yeah, at the start of lockdown, it was one of the things that we set out to do was oh, to make goodness. sure that, oh, my... <laughs> I'm so, oh, you, you are Robert so Ward. generous. Uh, Robert Ward giving £20 on the Super Chat says, Thank you, Jenny and Zoe. Happy Christmas. Enjoy. Thank you ever so much. Oh, that is so, so generous of you. And we've got uh, Underground Eric in, Ron B. Um, gosh, Josh's Train Room, Clive Cobalt, J94, Garthy, and the TARDIS is directly behind. Yes, it is. So I'm going to. Oh, ooh, oh, Jen, oh. the back just fell off the chair. Did you break that I spent three pounds on that chair for you? I am inclined three to... Three whole squiddly diddlies. No, don't. Don't break it. It's a, it's no, an no, antique. No. Uh, an antique. Antique. She's just going to fix the chair live. Right, uh, talk to the you just think Jen is now fixing her chair with a cordless drill. It's a plastic chair, but she's drilling it anyway. Yeah, do you this just uh, this seems like a really... Um, Wrong yeah. thing to do, but yeah, okay. You keep an eye on the nice people. I am keeping an eye on the nice people. <laughs> uh, Warren Cleversley, uh, I believe he may be new to the channel, says hello, Jennifer. Greetings from sunny Florida. Love your oh, layout wow. and what you do, and what you do for the hobby. You rule. Thank you ever so much. Gosh, it's it's a, it's all go. Gosh, you people are um, are typing faster than I can read. I just seen seventeen oh one. The field, the filed flyer, um, New Western Grove. Uh, it says, hey Jenny, this has cheered me up. It's my Oxford Diecast 176 car was supposed to get here three days ago. Oh, isn't uh, the Christmas post is very it, hit and miss. And, it, yeah, more more miss than hit sometimes. Um, unfortunately so. And also, I'd just like to say, I hadn't, um, basically the post turned up late today. Um, so I would also like to thank uh, Richard Brighton and DCC Concepts who sent over the, um, the, the power packs, the um, the stay alive power pack. I knew ha, I'd get the, ha, ha, ha. I knew stay I'd get alive, the right word eventually. Alive. So um, this is going to be a review in the new year for the DCC Concepts uh, Stay Alives, and very generously also sent a Zen Black chip to go with them. Uh, and I've been really looking forward to these. And you might remember when I reviewed the Zen Black decoders, um, there was like a fly lead and uh, I said at the time they were for the uh, Stay Alive uh, power packs and they have now arrived and I'm still blown away by the amount of capacitor, capacitance and um, these things come with. When I was at school and I'm I'm in my forties. It was the fifteenth century. Yeah, they they just they just they just invented the uh, steam turbine. I hadn't really thought about locomotion. They just yet. invented the Earth being round. I know. Before that, people just <laughs> tended to fall <laughs> off the edge. No, but when I was at school, I remember asking the physics teacher, A level physics teacher, it's like, why do we keep doing like microfarads? We're like calculating things in microfarads and maybe millifarads, and I was you know. Why are we dealing in such small units? Well, what's a farad? Why, why is a farad so big? And he said, oh, well, it's actually a huge measurement of charge. And he went and rummaged in the storeroom and he came back out with a one farad capacitor. And it was actually, um, if you remember those dry cell, Dur um, the Duracell dry cell or the Ever Ready dry cell batteries that you used to get for powering things like radios. And they were a bit like a small car battery. That one farad capacitor was that size. And um, oh, Jay has sent uh, a five pound. Thank you so much. Oh, thank Jay. you so Jay's much. Merry Christmas, Jenny Jew TV. Oh, thank you, Jay. That is incredibly generous thank of you. Thank you so so much. Um, I, I'm blown away at the generosity that people are showing tonight. It thank you amazing. ever thank so you. much. <coughs> and. Always remember, there, there are a few people saying that they can't send money. It's not expected. You don't need to. We provide the show free because we want to share our love with the community. Very much. Our and love it's... of models. You love trains. I just like really small models. And it's like I said at the start of lockdown especially, I felt it was so important to have something to bring the community together because I know there's a lot of people who through lockdown 
um, you know, maybe you're, you're living on your own. You don't necessarily have close friends around that you can bubble with. Maybe, you know, maybe you know, they've got their own family or they're bubbling with other family members. So you, yeah, like me. Exactly. So you end up in a situation where, you know, the Model Railway Club is closed because of COVID. And it's I, I, never been more important for that human contact, the lifeline, that live interaction with people. And I recognised from the outset that we needed stuff like that. It's why we put together the live stream guide. So it wasn't just about the Monday Club, that, you know, there was yeah. also... Uh, letting people know what other live streams there were. And unfortunately, because YouTube's turned the link system off, we can't share the links at the moment, which is a bit of a pain in the bottom. Um, but certainly, you know, it's nobody should ever feel alone through all of this because the community has got your back. And I know that um, Ollie at Wardle Road as well um, did a big thing where he called out the trolls because the trolls were poison in the community. And I stood um, shoulder to shoulder with Ollie on that one. That, you know, we don't need the people who always belittle other people, say their modelling's not good enough. That is, is rubbish. We, sh we, we shouldn't tolerate that in our community because everybody is welcome. Everybody really should feel welcomed. And, you know, it's about sharing ideas, about, um, you know, personal interaction. You know, really, really important. So that's kind of what I try to make the Monday Club from the outset. And lockdown has kind of brought that to the fore. But anyway, enough about me waxing lyrical. Tonight's Open University message of love and peace and harmony was brought to you by Jennifer Kirk. <laughs> but yeah, Wardle Road, when you posted that on social media... Um, it was like, finally, somebody has gone out there openly and said, look, we need to call out the trolls. Turn because, on the um, phone on uh, and what? Turn on the phone on Melbourne. Oh, right, okay. Um, it has gone very warm all of a sudden. There's a, a lot. Like you're blushing. Oh, yeah, there is that. So, there you go. We're going to blow some air at the monkey. Um, let's see, is the monkey melting yet? <laughs> I am melting, I'm melting, I'm melting. Mm. Right, okay, enough of that. We don't want the screen <laughs> cracking. Um, but yeah, uh, Sparky107107, 107, 107, hello <laughs> to you. Um, <laughs> Zach Farmer said, oh, I think we're having pizza too tonight. We had pizza earlier on and we it was did, yes. really nice. Um, you know, I, I, I think I'm in danger of turning into a pizza because I eat so many, but... Uh, I'm not it, sure who he's talking about, but... Um, well, where's it gone? Oh, it's jumped off the screen. There was a good joke there, and I need to find... Oh, this is going to upset me now. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Island Scenics as well. It says, I don't care if my modelling is rubbish. I made it for me. I know exactly what you mean. Actually, I have seen your modelling, and it is very, very good. But definitely, at the end of the day, we all start somewhere. And, uh, you know, there's so many different ways of doing things. That there is no right way. There's no no wrong way of doing things. Absolutely. Uh, and it's about what you get out of the hobby. And um, I know I've been posting some. In fact, I'm going to take the monkey cam and I'm going to That's point right. it at um, an area which. Let's just see if I can get it into. Well, while you're view. doing that, I found the joke. Roger Wollstoneholm says, uh, "I'm not sure who's talking about, but he says so old that a centurion was a rank, not a tank." <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. But this is where I've actually um, expanded the baseboards. It used to be that that track at the top was right on the edge. Um, and uh, for various reasons, uh, I just um, widened the baseboard a little bit. And um, I did post some pictures of this on various groups. And people really liked it. But... Um, <laughs> It's it's something that actually is the products that are on the market at the moment They're make doing this so easy. And, you know, ten years ago I couldn't have, have made that, just couldn't have done it. I mean, the Will's kit was available ten years ago, which is what you're seeing for the culvert. But the grass, it's all from uh, Wall World Scenic. Static grass has changed your layout so much. Yeah, so... Do you remember um, when you weren't going to bother with static grass? I know, I know. Just like you I, weren't going to bother with DCC? Shh. There's a whole pile of shh with your name on it. 
But no, um, the uh, War World Scenics, um, I've become a huge, huge fan. I'm just trying to get that so that the light doesn't reflect off the label. Um, it's, it's changed my modelling dramatically, absolutely dramatically. And it's so easy to do. I mean, at the end of the day, if I can do that, seriously, anybody can do that and get these kind of effects. And what I'm amazed at is this. Oh, yeah, the join. There was or a least... join there and now I can't see it. Yeah, the lack of join. Um, and, and the back as well. The other thing as well, people always ask me about the flowers. They say, how do you do the flowers? Didn't you put that into one of your videos? Yeah, I do have a video on the flowers, but... Right, so... Um, Can I stop holding this now? Please? Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry about that. I am certain. So, um, people always ask about the flowers. So, what I've got here is from War World Scenics, uh, Red Flower Scatter. They're doing various different colours. I like the red, the purple, the yellow, and then there's also shades of green as well. Don't neglect the green. So we've got olive green scatter there as well. Uh, and yeah, because uh, not all plants are uh, colours. Some, yeah. some actually are quite green. And it's about you know the textures and stuff. And if I just take the lid off this, all it is is <laughs> it's... Ron B says I tried static grass and all the lights went out in our town. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I don't know how well that's going to show up on the camera. Not very. But it, it's just like kind of, um, I wouldn't say a powder. Action cam. Imagine if you liquidised this. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Imagine if you liquidised uh, a sponge, I guess, a type of sponge, and um, it's, it, you didn't it's really not a like... powder, but it's like granules. It's really fine. Yeah, reasonably fine, but it's not as fine as, um, and they do do... It looks like a ball of turmeric. Kind of, yeah. But um, Don't put turmeric onto your layout. No, 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 but the, like the green, I've got the olive green here, and this is finer, so they do different grades. And it, it's just, it's changed dramatically the We've way I'm looking. a few comments uh, saying that uh, it's really good if you can uh, afford it. Uh, or that you don't have to pay for it because they send you it for review. What um, would you say to that? Um, I have bought a lot of stuff as well. I mean, it's not exactly expensive. The main outlay is the original uh, static grass applicator, isn't it? Yeah, once you get the static grass applicator, you don't have to use just War World Scenic stuff. Um, it happens to be War World Scenic did send me a lot of stuff. But in the past, I've bought uh, a lot of the Pico stuff as well. And they're all pretty good. Um, Woodland Scenics do stuff as well. Um, Hornby actually do some of the static grass. And you don't need to spend a huge amount. Um, so, for example, I recently bought some of the, I think the Pico bags of static grass for a project. And they're, they're only a couple of quid each. So, really, once you've got the, the uh, initial outlay of the static grass applicator, oh, my word. Um, it's my model railway. It says Merry Christmas and thanks for all the Monday clubs. Thank you. And as well. just very kindly donated ten pounds. Thank you ever so much. Um, as incredibly generous of you. Um, so thank you very very much. We've um, got an interesting point here from Sparky one hundred seven one hundred seven. A sprinkle of colour adds to a scene a lot. It just helps the eyes to blend them together. Yeah, um, and I always say when doing things, it's about um, texture is often as important as colour. So you need to mix the colours, but also mix up the textures. And you may see me use a lot of sand on the base level for the ground. And actually, I know you can buy bags of sand from please pay people like Pico, and it, like, they like charge you a fiver for a 100 gram bag. But just... Go out to somewhere like B and Q or uh, any other uh, DIY chain and get a uh, kiln dried paving sand, and it's the stuff they sell for block paving, and it's about four pounds for a ten kilo bag. Literally, one bag will last you for pretty much forever. So. You think laterally, there's a lot of great products on the market that don't necessarily have to cost a lot of money. Um, and a little static grass does go a long, long way. And what I would say to you is... Um, <laughs> Elle McLean says, so, oh, you've just got the beach. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you need to dry it out thoroughly. Absolutely dry it thoroughly. And also bear in mind that if you just pick sand out of the beach or a riverbank, it's going to have a few hangers on. So you would need to sterilise it by baking it in the oven at at least... Um, so this is something I remember from biology back in the day. 
a minimum of 104 degrees centigrade for something like half an hour and that will get rid of any organic matter because what you don't want is little creepy crawlies uh, hitching a lift or like, even moulds and bacteria so or that... presents left by wandering dogs there is that it's like ooh, ooh macaroons um uh, someone said Andy's got a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, to hardwire a loco that's not DCC ready, do you use an 8-pin or a 21-pin decoder? Um, I would say um, always go for uh, an 8-pin or actually um, Trainomatic. And I, you know, people say, oh, you're sponsored by Trainomatic. Yes, I am. But Trainomatic do a, what I, I refer to it as the wired 6-pin decoder. And it's... Um, it's the decoder connected to a six pin plug but by a wire rather than having the pins direct on the board and uh, the ones that they do are often cheaper than the eight pin decoders by a couple of pounds and the other benefit of them is is that they're always in stock whereas the eight pin ones quite often because of high demand can go in and out of stock you can always get the six pin version with the wires and you can wire them in because unless you're adding in a lot of peripherals, a lot of things needing auxiliary functions, which in itself is a pretty hardcore thing to do in a non DCC ready locomotive, you actually only need a four pin decoder. And um, in some locomotives in the past, I've actually bought the Hornby four pin decoder to do a hard wire because it does just have the wires that you need. Um, I would personally never hardwire a 21-pin decoder. Will you stop it? But Aww. that's that's my personal preference. <laughs> yeah. um, the lightsaber is not fair. It's not fair. I'm going yeah. to cry. Ooh, and actually, ooh, ooh, ooh. stop it. <laughs> Paul Bottrell says, actually, this is... A, don't overlook... Um, don't overlook the fact that um, you can get sort of off-brand products uh, on through uh, eBay. And Paul Bottrell says, I got my static grass from Macterials Modeling Materials through eBay. Nicely priced and I'm very impressed. So, um, it... Quite often... I mean, I think that the most expensive thing is the static grass applicator. And what? Oh yeah, well spotted. So we do have a derailment. I wonder if that's what people were talking about. Has that been going around like that all the time? Guys, don't tell them I did it. Did you? Oh, you heard that, did you? Well, we've got an interesting question here. Yeah? Um, well, actually, it's not so much a question, it's a statement. Uh, Class 05 says, evening all on the 50th anniversary of the railway children. Oh, oh gosh, a 50th anniversary. I must get round to getting myself a, the Railway Children set because Backman did do it. I know actually, I think it was, um, I thought he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but um, B. Mozza in the chat, uh, also um, known as Brian Mozza of 247 Developments, uh, very kindly sent the Liverpool and Manchester Railway coach for review. You'll have seen that uh, last Wednesday's review. Unless uh, you've travelled through time. Yes, um, I've just I've just managed to tip the coupling out onto myself, and it's just well done. Um, but also, a lot of the um, nameplates that we've reviewed, the etched nameplates. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Now, what was I talking about? Nameplates. No, before that. Why? Why did I? I was going to mention um, B Mozza for for something. Yeah, uh, two four seven developments was doing something. I can't remember what I was talking when about. When it comes back to you, it'll be all right. Mm. Um, <laughs> David Scott says, depends where the beach is, it may also glow in the dark. Um, yeah, don't go to uh, <laughs> Chernobyl Beach. Yeah. Uh, Liam at Mitt New Mills Model Railway, Trainomatic are decent decoders. I've only got one, but no issues with it. Gauge Master decoders are great too, but not keen on the Hornby ones. Um, actually, Gauge Master ones are really good. Uh, they're actually made for them by DCC Concepts, who also make the Rails decoders and the Hattons decoders. Um, so they're a really, really great decoder. I've not really had any problems with the DCC Concepts decoders. Uh, really great ones too. Um, the Hornby decoders, I think the, the problem I've had with occasionally with Hornby decoders is the fact that the, um, the the decoders are bare, which means it's very easy for them to short out on things. And I really do wish that they would kind of shrink wrap them in 
in something that doesn't cause them to overheat, but protects them from uh, grounding out on various things in a locomotive. Um, but by and large, I've not had a problem. Once you're aware of that, you can take steps to um, alleviate any potential issues. But I've not really had a huge amount of issues with the Hornby. We did have a, I think it was a King TTS sound chip go pop up here. But it's one thing actually, a lot, I've heard, heard a lot of people say is that Hornby's um, uh, customer services is really, really good. So if you do have one of their decoders go pop, then they are very good at sorting that out. Also, it has to be said, DCC Concepts are as well. And in fact, I think DCC Concepts also offer that even if it was your fault when you popped a decoder, they will uh, effectively give you a half the value off a replacement if it was your fault. So, you I mean, you can't say better than that. Jim uh, says, if the railway children are 50 years old, they're not children anymore. You're no, young at heart. That's yeah, what counts. That was it, yeah. Right, we're, we're back now. I've worked out what it was I was talking about. But B. Mozza did actually, I think he offered me um, uh, the chance to buy one of the railway children's sets. And at the time, I wasn't in a position to, but I may have to revisit that if he's still got it. I don't know if he's in at the moment. I haven't seen uh, a comment from him. Big hello to Human City Junction Model Railroad. And um, says, Cupboard Monkey is being uh, a troublemaker. Yes, you are. I, uh, I resemble that comment. McBenman1 says, Hi Jenny, I'm thinking of decorating my Silver Lady locomotive. Do you have any advice? Um, the only thing I would say is, uh, with a live steam locomotive especially, if you've been running it, you need to thoroughly degrease the paintwork before you do any work on it, because otherwise, if you're going to be painting, touching it up, or weathering, it won't stick otherwise, because the oil will, will stop it bonding. But it's not something I've ever thought of, really. Vic Freak, does the Trainomatic range of decoders support Firebox Flicker? Thank yes, you, it Mal does, Sister. because um, Firebox Flicker is just one of the auxiliary functions, so it will do. Anyway, I'm going to um, Thank you scroll so down much, to the Mal bottom. Thank you Model Railway, who has sent in £20 with a little dancing guy saying, you are amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Melchester Model Railway, that is so, so generous, the £20 that you've given on this super chat. I, I'm, I'm just... I'm actually blown away how generous a lot of you guys Hopefully have been today. Hopefully not literally. I don't have to chase after you down the street. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm blown oh. away. Manthony 1956. We modellers try many items not originally intended for model usage. Avoid anything magnetic or conductive. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have used them unintentionally. Worse for your railway than cats. Yeah, I can imagine. Um... Oh my word, Ham Shackleton says, Railway children, I saw a comment elsewhere that Jenny Agatha was the mother in the latest 2021 version. Oh my. Wardle Road says, Wow, Jenny, you've won the lottery tonight. I wish. I did, well, what's the jackpot? Several million pounds? I've seen squillion. Mm, yes. Why well, have billions when you could have millions? <laughs> um, kinetic. You're a bit daft tonight, Jenny. Yeah. Kinetic Rail says, uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, Agatha plays the mother in the 2000s remake. They oh do my. that. The, the, the woman who played Supergirl in the original Supergirl film is the mother of Supergirl in the new uh, TV oh. show. They like to do little things like that. Yeah, they have little cameos. It's like in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy film, all of the original Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy TV show cast are in it, cameoing. Yeah, even Marvin is stood in the queue. Yeah. He's it, the only one I noticed <laughs> when we went to see it. In no, the, the, um, the recorded message when they visit the uh, Magrathea, um, that, that's Arthur Dent. It is, but mm. he's got a bit older, so he, he yeah. hasn't changed a bit. Stevie Film asks, Jenny, if you did win the lottery, what layout would you then build? I would buy several miles of disused railway line and I would relay something full-sized and I would play trains a bit like... Um, um, uh, Sir McAlpine did at uh, Forley Hill. I'd do that, to be honest with you. I really would. Um, so, if you uh, if you manage to uh, win the lottery, basically the next Martha Railway show is going to be at your house. <laughs> yeah, we'd just have a party. We, we'd have <laughs> like um, I'd have to have a dedicated bar coach, and basically we'd just go on there and it'd be like yeah. And a, like some kind of balcony car at the back where we could all Basically just... Basically, uh, get a replica of the Royal Coach. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Also, what about a jacuzzi car? 
you basically just have an open wagon, but you you'd like make it watertight, fill it up with water, and have some jets, and everybody would just be lounging in there like one big jacuzzi, watching the world go by. I'm not. I'm not sure I'd want to be in a giant bath with you. <laughs> Fine, don't come Especially in. Especially an open air bath. Don't come in my jacuzzi. We've got blackjack and hookers, you know. No, you haven't. <laughs> oh no, we haven't. I can't substantiate that. Um, Patrick Ling says Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all. Um, big hello Merry to Christmas Underground and Happy New Year. Uh, Eric. Uh, David Cook says Jenny and Zoe, you deserve it. Live every Monday, bar none, even when you're sick. Oh, thank you. Um, he didn't say live every Monday. He said live every Monday. Oh yeah, that's that's a point. Yeah, actually. English, do you speak it? <laughs> Not very well. It's like my tongue oh my got encrypted. A uh, big thank you to Ryan G. Says Happy Christmas, Jenny and Zoe. Thanks for all you do. The Monday Club has been something to look forward each Monday during lockdown. Thank you ever so much. Um, Main Train says, Hey Jenny, what's your fave model you have on your layout or collection? I'm afraid it's, it's always still the H1. It's always the H1, which um, why isn't it running, Jennykins? I don't always run it. I have run what it on the your Monday. Your I, I have run it on the Monday Club a few times. So um, that that's my go-to favourite. I'm actually really looking forward to the H2 Atlantic in a similar livery, the uh, LBSC Burnt Umber. Um, in fact, if I let's just turn that around, I I'm going to put that on to that track. Keith Pointer has basically said uh, what you were saying before you started converting all your stuff. I have well over fifty locals. Converting them to DCC means I need to win the lottery. Um, do it slowly. Um, what I did actually up here on Weir Yard. Um, I started converting before Weir Yard. Um, and I, I had, uh, I already had in my collection, I knew that there was somewhere in the region of, um, I think it was um, probably in the region of seven or eight that I knew were DCC fitted that I bought second hand. If you're having problems with that chair, do you want to swap? No, no, no. Ah, the screw broke. That's what the problem was. Lockdown's breaking your screws. Uh, no, I'm afraid. Big fat um, Jenny is breaking. The screen. That's what I mean. Lockdown. Yeah. So let <laughs> lockdown me... more like wait up. <laughs> yeah. So let me just. Uh, um, what was I talking about? My 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 memory is shocking today. Yeah, I think you need some sleep. Um, Jen's just going to do a live repair. Yeah. Are you finished? Oh, that has kind of. And now you've broken it again. I heard that click. I've just had the rip. No, no, everything's fine. Right. Um, Is your seat still full of uh, DVDs? Yes. yes. Like St. Uh, Trinians. Oh. <laughs> it does have St. Trinians in there. I know it has St. Trinians in there. Are you breaking again? It, it's thoroughly broken. Jen is breaking all of her stuff. Uh, while you're doing that, Hyde Kent says, any advice from you guys for a layout with curved Pico set track points? I'm having real trouble. Um, personally, I've never got on with the set track curve points. Uh, they always tend to cause a lot of derailments. Uh, there's no getting round it. They're, in my opinion, especially on the the inner curved uh, line, they're just too tight for a lot of locomotives and rolling stock to so deal with. Would you say they were best used with a, a very short wheelbase? Um. I personally avoid them if at all possible. Now Pico in their streamline range do do um, curved points but the telling thing about them is is that when you look at them they're not all that curved so if you can find a way of avoiding using them on the main lines then that would be my single biggest advice for reliable running. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, avoid them if you can. Um, Class 05 says, I assume you've already touched on it, Jenny, but I think I heard that Hellion's Lynn should be out for, uh, scheduled for release in the first quarter of next year. Yes, uh, I have checked with uh, Ben Jones at Hellion and <laughs> what? Vic Freak, oh. £5, thank you so much, <laughs> saying he's a donation for a decent chair. 
Funnily enough, this chair only cost three pounds in a charity shop, so actually that's two pounds more than we need. But thank you ever so much, Big Free. I'm gonna get you a stool. Uh, we could convert this into a stool. I just cut the back off. Don't do that. That um, chair's what? Actually, you've ruined it already. Uh, it was, uh, anyway, right. We were talking. Meanwhile, back at back at the ranch. Uh, it says Jen, you were talking about DCC startups, says Brian Stone. So you're leaving us hanging. You, you, the, the cupboard monkey keeps distracting you. I am sorry. I will stop. Right, so I had about six locomotives that I bought secondhand that were ready fitted, and there is a CV number, I can't remember, it's not a CV9 that you can set, so it will run on DC. There are caveats, so for example, you cannot use a high frequency uh, rail cleaner because it will nuke the chip, ditto for feedback controllers, um, but then I bought a few of the TTS sound chips, very impressed with them. When I started building Weir Yard, I actually built it with a couple of the tracks set to go to my gauge master controller that I've got here. Are you wanting some slack on yeah, that? Yeah, please. Yeah, that, that should give you a bit Thank more you. slack. So um, what I could actually do is I could still run some of the DC locomotives on tracks that were completely isolated. There were, there were still crossovers, so the track work was there for them to be able to be a part of the full system. But I used uh, insulated rail joiners and um, I kept the track separate so I could run DC trains separate from the DCC system. And then when I reached a certain point when enough locomotives were converted, I did it over about 18 months. Um, then I converted the DC tracks into, I just integrated them into the DCC track. So now, Weir Yard is completely DCC, but technically it is perfectly possible for me to re-enable the DC tracks, because they're separate from the bulk of the, um, of the layout, and run DC stuff on it. And occasionally I do do that. So for example, when I was doing reviews of old Hornby 00 items, I did go down that route. And that's what I would say to you is, you know, kind of go half and half. Um, do look out for decoders second hand. Um, I, I know some people say, like, oh, whoa, no, 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 I don't buy them second hand. But um, when I was at Worley, last time Worley was actually on, uh, there was a stall where amongst uh, all new stuff, apart from me, had a little bowl of second hand decoders. And what the guy said to me was, he says they're decoders that he said they've come out of my personal locomotives when I've converted them to sound from regular DCC. And he was selling them, and they were good chips. They were like Lens, um, uh, DCC Concepts, that kind of thing. Really, really good quality decoders. And he was selling them for about £8 each. And it was a really good way of very very quickly uh, converting a load of locomotives and those you know i've been very lucky i've been sent a few but i have bought a lot as well you know a lot of people say oh you know um people send you loads of free stuff that is you know i do get sent stuff for review i wouldn't call it free i have to make videos uh, on them which it, it is a lot more work than you know you look at a, a 10 minute video it doesn't take 10 minutes to make believe me um but this year alone, um, just to keep the channel going, I have spent thousands upon thousands of pounds on materials for builds, on stuff for reviews, on top of that. So it, it's not all plain sailing, believe me. Flint Hills Model Railway says uh, CV29 set to bit 2 for DC working. I knew there was a 9 in there somewhere. Uh, I couldn't remember the exact CV number, but yeah, that's absolutely correct. What you may find is, and what a lot of the manufacturers of the decoders do say, is that the, the, the decoder will run better on DCC if the DC running is disabled. So what you tend to find is people like me, they set that chip, that bit, to be off. So none of, if you put my locomotives on a DC line, they'll just sit there and go, what, you wanted me to do something? A few people are saying that they're having issues. They can hear you but they can't see anything. All I can say is uh, reload because it should be fine. I've got a monitor that's uh, checking the live feed. Yeah, it's fine. Same here, because this is coming back to me through the internet. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm seeing the um, the kind of the broadcast feed, as it were. So I can only suggest that may be a browser issue or a YouTube issue, something like that. 
Um, so anybody's having issues, uh, just try reloading um, your browser and see if that fixes the problem. Mm. Um, Main Train says, I did buy two Daypole chips, but they don't seem to like being in a Bankman loco for some reasons. Yeah, and this is something else actually I've noticed. Um, when it comes to manufacturers, as in um, model manufacturers, so Daypole make their own decoders, Bankman make their own decoders, and uh, Hornby make their own decoders, they appear to be set up with the CV settings factory set to suit the characteristics of the kind of motors that they use. And what that means... Which you can actually understand. It's totally understandable. But um, what I have found is that if you put a Hornby decoder in a Bankman locomotive, it's very juddery. It sort of surges, surges, surges. It's not smooth running unless you fiddle with the CVs. And likewise, if you put a Bachmann decoder in a Hornby locomotive, you'll have similar me, issues. I found similar issues. Now, if you go for a brand of decoder which isn't tied in with a manufacturer of models, so for example, DCC Concepts, uh, Trainomatic, uh, just to give two examples they're set up to work well with any locomotive and what i found with those is you don't need to fiddle about with the cv settings you can put that in a daypole locomotive a backman locomotive a hornby locomotive um, a hellion locomotive and just natively out of the box they tend to work really really well um, i know daypole do the the imperium decoders and i've i've not used many of them it has to be said um, but the ones I've got, I tend to, they tend to have been, I've bought a locomotive from D the Daypole stand at a show and bought a decoder at the same time, which is why they end up getting fitted with that Daypole Imperium decoder. And I've had no issues with those in that combination, but I can understand that there are occasions when um, it may be frustrating if, you, if you're not familiar with setting the CVs to optimise performance. Um, that one brand of decoder is not working with another brand's locomotives. My goodness, we've got an interesting uh, thing here. So congratulations are definitely in order. It's just scrolled off the screen. But uh, Anthony Dodge, Model Train Outsider, says he's got a double whammy of age. Another birthday on Saturday, then his first grandchild on Sunday. Well, happy birthday and uh, congratulations. And congratulations to you. My goodness. Um... <laughs> McBenman1 asks, Hi Jenny, can you do a footplate experience video, please? I would love to, actually. Uh, I think it's something, unfortunately, at the moment, it's very difficult to get out to preserved lines. Uh, but it's the, certainly it's something I'd like to do when things start to get back to normal. The best we can really do is stick the action camera in front of one of the trains again. I know. Well, I did actually get to ride the footplate of City of Wells. Whoa! Oh, that's, that's big. Sort of flash there. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'm, I'm not worried. worried, I'm just telling you. Oh, God, come on. Got all your stuff gone wrong. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. Okay, oh. while you're sorting that out... You so, speak to the nice people. No, I was thinking of just doing a, a quick show of a, a video. While oh, you're doing what that. video are you going to show? Well, we're going to show that uh, action cam feed that we've got from last week. Oh yes, that was nice. Where did you put it? It's just left on your hard drive. I, I, I delete now. Oh right, um, right anyway, there was a couple of other questions I wanted to um, go through. Um, Flymo Chairman 1 confirms, yep, 720 and sound fine here too. John PW 22 just got a TTS 37 chip to put in one of my Lima 37s. Any advice, do's and don'ts? Um, one thing I would suggest is now Lima locomotives can, not always, but can be slightly higher current drawing. So I would suggest that make sure the decoder has good airflow around it for cooling, um, service the, lo the, the motor on the locomotive uh, to make sure that it, it's, you know, it's as, as good as it's going to be, uh, run it in first. Um, but also the TTS sound decoders are often massively improved by changing the speaker that comes with them. So it may be worth investing in a, a higher quality speaker to replace that sort of weird circular one. 
that comes with the Hornbeat TTS decoder. Um, I've actually had great results with even speakers as cheap as £5 for a, a little speaker can be a much better sound improvement because the sound file that's on the Hornby TTS decoders does seem to generally be quite good. And one that I would say to you, because um, I know Lima did do a Class 20, do consider the Hornby Class 20 TTS sound decoder because in my opinion that is a superb sound file and you know, I know there's a lot more expensive ones out there that do the class 20 but in terms of what I got out of my Hornby TTS class 20 decoder I was very impressed with that sound right um, right class 05 asks do you have to do anything special with DCC 009 like not going over certain numbers no at the end of the day um, the decoder doesn't actually care what scale or gauge of locomotive it's sat in. The decoder is the same decoder, whether you put it in a 00 locomotive, an O gauge locomotive, an N gauge, or an 009. N gauge. So um, there's absolutely nothing special that you would have to do with a decoder if you're putting it in 009. I, w I wouldn't worry about that. Um, Anthony, Anthony Dodge, the model train outsider, uh, welcome to you. Mark Wilson says, Keith, 90% of mine are eBay Lima Locos, apart from a couple, a couple of Hellion Lockdown Locos that I have bought with my unused petrol money. And definitely, yeah, um, there, there are looks of the good things. I know a lot of people struggling with mental health through the lockdown, one of the many reasons that um, you know, doing the Monday Club every Monday, come rain or shine, is so important. Um, but do look to the good things that have come out of the lockdown. I know a lot of people have found hobbies, not just model railways, not just model railways, but also, um, you know, all of the other hobbies. And that's been a great boon for the hobby. Um, it's been a great boon for a lot of people's mental health, being able to do their hobby. But then, you know, things like saving petrol money. Um, and I think a lot of people as well who've started working from home, who may be commuted to an office before a lot of companies have found that actually this works quite well and the, the employee is happy the employer is happy and you save a lot of money on say petrol I mean I know that I spend a lot of money uh, on petrol to commuting you know I, I commute like 200 miles a week on my day job and um, you know that, that can be a lot of money which if you then have freed up for your hobby is a major boon so let's always look to the upside i know a lot of people as well around christmas i know you know a lot of people want to see family but there are people who actually don't like socializing uh with large family gatherings uh, the cupboard monkey being one of them um so actually it does take a little bit of the aggro about like oh i don't really want to go to such and such's house oh, for like three you, days on the trip boy. thank you so much and merry christmas oh wow i'm well behind here let me just um, a bit and yeah it... oh thank you very much fat wallet boy too that is incredibly generous of you um absolutely what do you say uh, it's what you're saying about mental health it's not something that, uh, being British, we ever really talk about, the stiff upper lip and all that. But it is quite a quite an important thing. You've got to make sure that you're fine first. Yeah, definitely. Um, but what you're seeing, incidentally, just in case anybody's wondering who wasn't here last week, that isn't us now. That's us from last week. Which um, is why you're in a different uh, coloured top. Funny that. <laughs> As somebody said, uh, double Jenny. That sounds like a very, very poor Sega Master System video game, doesn't it? Or some it? sort of chuckle vision thing. Uh, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny vision, <laughs> Jenny vision. <laughs> She's got double vision. <laughs> yeah, but we sent the action cam round, the layout last week, you might remember. And actually, it was uh, it worked out quite well. And it shows just how small a space you've <laughs> left for us to, so you can fit as yeah. much locomotive oh, in as possible. incidentally as well, you can see where I expanded the baseboard. I forgot to mention, um, but if we look out... Oh yeah, just behind me. Yeah. I, I, oh, whoa. Right, you'll have to jump back now, because that's... Oh, hang on. It's going to go round again. Let's go round again. One more time. This is a part I didn't show earlier on. 
Oh my goodness. What? Sparky oh. 107, 107. Oh my, oh, my goodness. Oh my word, Sparky 107, 107. That is incredibly generous. Donated uh, 50 Canadian dollars. So this is only for Zoe. <laughs> you do a great job keeping Jen's stream on the right track. Thank you for doing a great job. You oh, are very thank welcome. Thank you so much. And I will make sure that the Cupboard Monkey oh gets goodness. that. Thank you so, so much. So thank you ever so much. That is so, so generous. Oh my goodness. But um, you were talking about your uh, the exten extension you did. It'll come round in a moment. Uh, yeah, but the camera's pointing the wrong way now. It is, but it'll come round in a moment. So, mm. um, what were you saying uh, about this extension? What the what the bit that's next? How, to you? how hard was it to actually add that? Because I think that's something that a lot of people might uh, wonder about as well. You've got your layout. Maybe well, you want to expand <laughs> it a bit. Is it difficult? Do you do you have worries about ruining it? Um, well, what I have said, I always say to people, have confidence in yourself. Confidence is very important for so many things, but um, you know, model railways particularly, um, you know, believe in your abilities and everything will turn out fine. And essentially what we've got here is this was filmed last Monday, so yes. exactly one week ago, and when the camera gets turned around... We will look out for the area which you, you've seen on the camera, seen pictures online. Um, you will actually see it on this. I'm going to pause when we get there. And that's been done in a week. But bear in mind that during that week, I have been away at work for four long days. So for four days, didn't do anything on the model layout. There was a fifth day I didn't do anything either because I couldn't be bothered. So in um, two days... Uh, in fact, it wasn't even two days. I did it in an evening, including the woodwork. Uh, that's how long it took. And, you know, so model layouts don't need huge lengths of time unless you want, want to take your time. So as we come out here, you'll see on the left hand side, there Just is now nothing. Where I'm showing the mouse now. Yeah, there is nothing. I'm going to let it run on a little bit so it'll come back there. Yeah. Uh, this bit here next yeah. to my chair. That's where the extension is. So that was basically about, I think I may be including the woodwork, it was about probably two <laughs> hours. <laughs> Class 05 uh, just wants to interject saying, uh, don't give Zoe the money, sitting on a chair and putting up a book Jenny isn't well, or actually, yes. Donate now for Zoe's in need. <laughs> <laughs> also, Hythe Ken tasks. Um, has anyone ordered the nicely umbrous LB and SCR H2 Atlantic 422 from Rails? I haven't actually ordered it, but I will be getting it. And it's, um, for me, the last uh, range of announcements of models that were forthcoming in this quarter from uh, uh, Bankman. The H2 Atlantic for me was the one. Um, I have to say, guys, every single time when Jenny mentions Bankman, I hear Batman. So Batman has been re producing model realism. Yeah. I thought he was da -da 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 Batman. Da -da 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 Batman. Batman. <laughs> What's your favourite locomotive on your network today, says Penn Junction? Well, so what's actually on the layout at the moment? Well, mm. technically, technically, the Brighton H1 Atlantic is on the layout. But if we ignore that one... Um, As it, we should. It's actually the weathered Class 7, which is over there. And actually, it's not on any of the cameras. Let me just check. If I go to back where yard... Uh, oh, it's like literally it would be um, sort of... Um, let me just see where my finger is there, just underneath there. There is a weathered Class 7. I did do a full uh, review video on that earlier this year. It's a, one of the Hellion Class 7s. And that's actually the favourite locomotive. If we ignore my favourite, favourite locomotive, that's my favourite locomotive on the layout tonight. Um, Island Scenics asks, why do Backman discontinue things? I think it's down to the batch methods of production. Um, so they will make a batch of models and when they're sold they're sold out until they do another batch but not every model is in the range at any one time so uh, they have what they you know they kind of rest models for a year or two years because otherwise if they churned out a model every single year you'd start to see them stop selling and it's no good for the manufacturer because you get lots of stock sitting around. No good for the model shops for the same reason. They've got a lot of money tied up in stock. So you see all the manufacturers do that. So say, for example, at the moment, Backman, we can't get a 9F from them because they're currently resting that tooling. Hornby, 
Well, uh, from Hornby, you can't get. Let's just think. What if? What do they do that we can't get at the moment? Holden B12, not in the current range because they're resting the model. Uh, the Q6 as well is another model that's not in the current Hornby range. The J50, uh, J15. Uh, you know, all of these models uh, are ones which effectively they're resting. You know, they're railroad class 40 as well. Um, and it'd be interesting to see on the 5th of January what Hornby are actually going to be announcing. Because I, you know, as much as I like the new announcements as much as anybody else, and some really great stuff uh, coming through uh, this last year, so I'm sure they'll be keeping up the red hot maximum bottom kicking pace. I really want to see. The BR Blue Class 56, another model, which the only one that we've seen is that Floyd liveried one. And I think, this is my guess, and I could be completely wrong, because I, I honestly don't know what uh, they are bringing out. Nobody's told me, and I specifically don't want to know, because I would then feel that, you know, it, <laughs> I'd be really worried I'd let something slip. But I think that Floyd Class 56 wasn't produced on its own. There were probably two other models made at the same time and will be early coming through in January to the shops and I think it's going to be sound fitted TTS sound fitted class 56 is in what I call small logo BR blue and probably large logo BR blue as well would be my guess or you know one of the other sectorization liveries now I could be wrong but that's a good educated guess for the Hornby range uh, see you later, Sparky107107. 107, 107. Do stay safe. Merry Christmas to you. Um, yes, ah, somebody's just um, uh, mentioned, actually, the V2 from... Um, the V2 from... Uh, it's been announced, a big rails announcement uh, a few days ago. Uh, and this is in conjunction with Batman. So the V2 has been on the cards for quite some time. In fact, uh, ever since they brought out their upgraded chassis, um, left the same top version of the V2 that a lot of people moaned about. But I do actually have the green arrow from that range up there. And I actually, I don't mind it. It's all right. Um, so there's a whole new retooled V2 been on the cards since then. And what Rails of Sheffield have announced, uh, also with the National Railway Museum, is that there's going to be a couple of exclusive versions of that, um, which uh, it's going to be the Green Arrow, I think it was. the Green Arrow? From the he used to uh, team up with the, the Green Lantern to fight crime. Um, but essentially, I think it's the Railway Museum's got Green Arrow, and then Rails is doing... Um, is it Durham Light Infantry and uh, one of the others as well? Kevin Patton says, Hello Jenny and Zoe, great to catch the stream again. I was wondering if you had any opinion on the continued use of buffer and chain systems in England versus the American standard knuckle coupler. That sounds like you, you give someone that a bunch of That sounds technical. Um, I think in the UK we're pretty much using knuckle type couplers. Um, they don't call them knuckle couplers. Uh, but... Um, the, the actual, like, the chains, um, the instanter or three-link type couplings, I don't think there's much, if anything at all, that's really using them anymore. Um, um, so I, I think we've pretty much got away from all that kind of thing, the same way that we've done away with vacuum-braked uh, rolling stock and unbraked rolling stock as well. Okay, yeah. Everyone's saying green arrow, yes. Yeah. Uh, ben Tullet says, uh, I'm back, just been sending emails to the Hornby Engine Shed team on ideas for articles in the signal box or engine shed episodes. Oh, excellent. Um, <coughs> Jenny keeps sending them article ideas, and they all they're all entitled, will you please uh, give me some uh, help on keeping Zoe out of the uh, train loft? <laughs> Oh, no. I think she's, she she sees me into all of them. I think she's trying to send me a hint. Mm. Um. So Garthian says hello, Les. Hope you're well. Oh, is Les Les? Yeah. Let see. Timber Surf. Um. Big hello to you. Is Les in? Les Cliff. There's at least one Les in. Um. I think it's. Uh, oh yeah. Not low be a model world. A big hello to you, Ronald hey, Morritt as well. Saying 
Good evening, ladies. Been using the tried and tested J cloth and PVA method on Will and Hall Parkway. I did actually work. say, um, see Alan Reynolds, uh, PVA J cloth, Alan Reynolds in earlier on. Um, and um, uh, let's have a look. Right, uh, Jen, I have a question for you. Do you? After tonight's live stream, what would you say to perhaps having a quick live game of Ticket to Ride? Uh, on what when you say on a the live game game. channel, will they stream that? We could do. Um, I mean, it'll be getting quite late for a lot of people because we must remember that it is a school night for a lot of people. Uh, and it's by that, I Christmas, the schools are out. When I say a school night, I, I say it in that tongue-in-cheek way that basically means a lot of people still have to go to work in the morning. Um, but um, Fat Wallet Boy 2 says, Does anybody know the regions that Hornby's new intercity executive Mark 1 RBR coach is operated in? They have two models, R4974 and R4974A. I couldn't tell you, actually, but I do need to buy probably both of them because you'll see going round somewhere today um yeah behind the somerset andy class 47 uh let me just if i bring up this camera you'll see it going past i love intercity executive livery on mark ones so what you're seeing going past is my full rake i recently managed to pick up the gov in the matching livery now i do have the backman restaurant car but i really do want to get those hornby uh, RBRs, it must be said. Um, I couldn't tell you which regions though. Right. Um, somebody did say, um, oh, um, somebody said that they just found the um, um, the last of the Potato Mountain series. Don't forget, if you haven't seen the building of YouTube uh, hasn't really been shown those, have they? I, I, they they've, they've fallen flat on their face, and I don't know why. Everybody's watched them, raves about them, um, but they haven't picked up a lot of views, and I don't know why. So, guys, get them shared out there on social media. Let people know about the Potato Mountain build, which is Project 009 Minith Tatis, um, because there's some really good tips in those build videos, and. Uh, um, it just seems weird that um, they're not getting the traction that I thought they would. Now, Ben Davis says, Hi, just to warn people, if you did Bassett Loke order uh, BL8010 and 8011, the Steampunk Passengers Standing Pack, they don't come painted. Yes, that was a shock to me, I yeah. have to admit. And the, but they do show them as painted on the Hornby website. Now, I, I spoke to Laurie Calvert about this. And he said he has been badgering Hornby to get the website changed because it's disappointing a lot of people, unfortunately. Um, and, yeah, I can see that a lot of people might be disappointed because painting figures is another acquired art form. And certainly we actually, and I thought that Hornby was sending me a set, but mysteriously, um, I got a box from Hornby today and I thought that they were sending me those figures for review. Um, what I actually got sent was um, uh, the gear sets. Um, so I don't know where, how well these show up. They're sort of reflecting the light. So yeah, these are the... They, they were actually very important for mm. you because you need them to repair your brain. Yes, exactly. She's been um, thinking too hard. <clears throat> the steampunk acrylic paints. Uh, I'm actually... These, nice. these are, I thought, were I really good. Like so I think you'll get good use out of those. But then they also Ooh. mysteriously sent me... An electro trend locomotive and I think the idea is that they want me to do a video where I steampunk it up um, that basically do a steampunk build on this locomotive and I was saying actually to New Junction earlier today when I said they sent uh, sent you the same and they sent him the same pack except he didn't get the locomotive but the locomotive uh, I'm going to show you this it's the the Zhuef style um, I think it's the um, it's based on a Spanish Kerr Stewart, I think, but it's an industrial livery as Molly number two. And actually, I really quite like this locomotive. I'm looking at it and I said to New Junction, I said, I feel almost bad this idea that I'm going to steampunk it up. Oh my uh, goodness. Oh, do you get quite a collection? In oh, you get brushes as well. I am. I am. Amazed the cupboard monkey this. is very, very impressed by the um, the acrylic paints that have come from Hornby. Eagle. That's 
that's what's in there. So these are actually really nice brushes. So I think uh, the top has fallen that off that. Bad. Yeah. So just very carefully put in the brush and bristle six, protectors. Six pots of acrylic paint. So in the steampunk colours, you get the three brushes, which are perfect for acrylic paints. These are really nice. These are proper Humbrol paints. They are Humbrol acrylic and 30% extra free ones as well. And they're Some specific <laughs> colours that are picked to go with the steampunk. But it doesn't mean you have to use them with steampunk. So um, we've got various greens, duck egg blues, sand colours, browns. Really nice set there. I'm impressed, I mm. have to say. Um, Pen Junction says, what's your favourite loco on the network? Is that, have I... You've already answered that. Have I? Right. Um, Z Fantasy Trains, hi to you. It says, I love to watch Potato Mountain, but I refuse to watch them out of order. There's just so many fun streams going on. I'm slowly getting to them. No problem. Well, they're uh, all out there now, aren't they? Mm, ben Tullet, they should have sent you a Gronk to Steampunk Cup. Um, possibly. Uh, Garthian says, I enjoyed watching the Minith Tatis build. Really giving me a few ideas for when I begin on my micro layout. Just need to stop getting sick first. Uh, I hope you're feeling better, actually, I have to say. Um, Simon Train's model, uh, model Railway Showcase says, I did post a photo of the Steampunk figures on the Monday Club. Yeah, I think it was your post I, I did see. Yeah. Um, somebody's saying I should wear a mask. Um, no, because the cupboard monkey lives with me. So, um... Uh, Why would you wear a mask? Yeah, I'd be like... <laughs> Actually, what? that's a great idea. Yes, put a mask on. <laughs> be muffled. No, um, the cupboard monkey and I actually live together in the same house. So, uh, you may have noticed that we don't have guests on the Monday Club and haven't since lockdown uh, back in March. And it's, it's quite simply because um, we uh, can't. We can't. Um, but because but we, we will, live together, we will get, uh, people let's face back it, on. I mean, like, she. The only reason I've uh, joined you is so you have someone to talk to because normally yeah. you would have had a special guest. But you don't need a mask with somebody you actually live with. No, right. we're immune to each other. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> I'm just going to put... Is it immune to each other or are we just used to each other? I think it's used to, you know. Ah, someone has finally spotted the TARDIS. Oh, right. I thought Garth... Uh, Garth Garthian in... has now, yes. Um, where is it? It's behind me. It's behind you. <laughs> We're not at the pantomime now, dear. Oh, 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 yeah, that's a point. Yes, um, there's a lot of pantomimes actually being done uh, online, which is... Uh, it's in, it's very interesting how adaptive a lot of uh, organisations have been through this. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of a pantomime online, because um, <laughs> I, I don't like travelling out in the cold. I actually like a pantomime. If it's done properly, it's a fun experience. Mm. I actually saw the Chuckle Brothers one time. Oh, the Chuckle Brothers rocked! And I had a massive headache that night, so I'm sat on the end of the, uh, the row and trying to enjoy it, but I've got a look on my face like I'm in pain. And one of them squirted me with a water pistol to try and make me smile. <laughs> uh, did they do the old to me, to you, to you, to Several me? Several times. See, I saw um, Bergerac, wasn't it? John Nettles in pantomime. He, can, was, he was very good. I can beat that. Fluella Benjamin. I saw Fluella Men Benjamin. I can beat all of that. Ken Dodd and the Diddy Men. Back when there was the tax thing and we all joked that he had two new Diddy men, Diddy Pay and Diddy Hell. Hunter and Jet from the Gladiators. And they came out and met people afterwards. Oh, brilliant. I'm trying to think who else I saw. Oh, oh, uh, Little and Large. Mm. I saw Little and Large in uh, pantomime I'm as well. Sorry, but... Uh, Rock on, Johnny. As a young lesbian, I was very, very happy and you will never top that experience of meeting Jet. Yeah. Uh, Clive Cobold actually provides um, the information, says, Hi Jenny, the new Hornby RB coaches worked on the um, the uh, London Midland region, Western region and Scottish region. Uh, Stephen Cameron says, Does anybody remember the C-Link liveried Mark 1 coaches? Yeah, Backman did produce some models of them. And it was, all, it was a bit weird because they did um, some for the Collectors Club, but then they also did, a, I think it was a single coach in the main range. And if you are looking for one, last time I was at Hatton's, I seem to recall that they still had one of the ceiling liveried coaches brand new in the cabinet. So might be worth checking them out. Certainly very interesting. 
Uh, Tony Wright says, I enjoyed watching the 009 videos. Ben Tullett, Jenny, did you enjoy the interview you did with Ken Patterson the other night? I noticed you got lost when they were discussing American Locos and Rolling Stones. Yeah, my connection dropped. Um, so We had so much trouble. Yeah, that, I, I don't we? know what caused that. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I felt so honoured to be invited on <laughs> by Sir Kenneth Patterson. Um, and so a big, big hello to uh, Ken and Michelle Patterson, who, if they don't watching live, um, they may well watch this on catch up. So a big hello to you. And don't forget, everybody, to check out the What's Neat This Week podcast, because it's, it's great. And I can only aspire to be as good as Ken, because he's so slick on the editing. Ronald Moritz says there's a pantomime on here every Monday. <laughs> oh, no, there isn't. Oh, yes. The, it's behind you. It probably is. Mm. Um, let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> oh, as the case may actually be when you're talking. Oh, it's Mich beyond me. <laughs> yeah, Michelle Patterson is on. So, uh, I, I see I was right. Uh, Michelle Patterson says, um, just FYI, you can't catch COVID through the internet. That is absolutely true. No, nope, because we big... have an antivirus. <laughs> yeah, we've got antiviral stuff. Oh, that, that's, oh, that was low-hanging fruit, but well done. It was. <laughs> um, but a big hello to Michelle Patterson. Um, Keith Pointer says, can you still get lights in the coaches when they're running? Um, it depends on the coach, doesn't it? Yeah, some some like the Hornby Pullmans come ready fitted with lights. I think the Backman Pullman ones do as well. Mm. Um, but you can fit um, uh, you can fit um, light strips. Uh, I know. Uh, I think Trainomatic do them. Uh, Daypole do them, and you can retrofit them to carriages. Somerset Andy says, thanks everyone, I have hit 150 subs, well Congratulations. done. Congratulations, that's not Brilliant. easy. Brilliant, yeah I know, it, it, it can be quite hard to get noticed. John PW 22 says, just realised how long that coal train is. Yeah, I put some yeah. extra wagons on, I, 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 it's now a full coal train. Um, so let's go round to view number one, and you're just going to see the Hellion Class 26 hoving into view. With a brake van, and then um, if somebody can count them there. There'll be somebody there going one, two, three, four. And if I now shout random numbers like 36, 37, 92, that's going to really annoy them. Um, but it's, it's not my complete collection because there are um, at least four, five, six. There are at least six other um, mineral wagons I can see just in the sidings, and there are. There's a whole load of others sat in drawers somewhere, but certainly uh, every single one of those is different. We've got a few uh, comments in uh, the chat about adding light strips to um, to coaches. And a few people are saying the LEDs are too bright and they're too white. What would you say for perhaps painting them with a uh, slight, slightly creamy or um... yellowy paint? I would say actually you can get LEDs that give a different colour light. Yeah. And oh I'm racking my brains and I'm just remembering that coach we saw last week that was uh, doing the disco with the changing colour LEDs. Yeah, yeah. Um I I could be right. If Richard Brighton is still in, I'm sure he'll put me right, but I think DCC Concepts might do coach lighting strips, but have a choice of um like incandescent bulbs, LED bulbs, uh, oil type lighting, gas lighting. So they have different ones with a different colour of um, LED. So you can actually pick what era. Because obviously LED lighting strips, they're everywhere now. But if you go back 20 years, it was incandescent. As in like um, either fluorescent tubes or actual <laughs> tungsten filament type bulbs. Um, Dunstan Guard Bank Drills. What? It's what? a Monty Python reference. Is it? Yes. Oh, Garthian. About the urban poet. Garthian says, I've seen Jasper Carrot in Panto as well as Christopher Biggin. Uh, I bet Jasper Carrot would have been good. Christopher Biggin, he practically lives in pantomime now. He's like the guy to go Yeah, for. yeah, he's basically, he's, he's always Dame something or other. Yeah. Uh, Z Fantasy Train says, You were so impressive on the show, Jenny. You brought them up to speed on the community of live. Oh, thank you ever so much. Uh, hello to Crossways Point Junction. Um, Mini Wistaston Junction. David Scott says, Explain C Link to our overseas members. Ah, of course, right. C Link was basically British Rail's 
own ferry service. So um, essentially, um, just like you'd have any other uh, ferry company operating ferries, um, British Rail, which was the nationalised Britain's rail company, had C-Link. Now, if you go way, way back, railway companies have, have always um, operated their own ships as well. So it was a natural progression when uh, the railways were nationalised in 1948. Um, they inherited a lot of ships and that part of the business became C-Link. The ships actually had TOPS numbers, believe it or not, in the 99,000 uh, range. Uh, they never carried them, but actually, if you, what was that? I smacked the uh, laptop into the back ah, of the chair. Right. They never actually carried those numbers anywhere visibly, but they if you got like the Ian Allen spotting guide, they were there in the back, apparently. But um, essentially, um, when everything was privatised, C-Link got sold off as a separate company. And so the railway ceased to own their own ferries. And a lot of those ferries were like um, roll-on, roll-on type, rough, roll-on, roll-off type roll ferries, on, roll on, roll but on. also train ferries as well. So that's what C-Link was. Um, and the C-Link coaches, I believe, were done to um, have special trains that met up with ferry services. So it's like an integrated thing. Uh, Austin Allegro says, Oi, oi, ladies. Hope you have a great Christmas. Thank you so much. Train Spotting UK Daniel Ray, hi to you. Flint Hills Model Railway Jeff Hammond says, Daypole make light strips. Um, I mentioned that earlier. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm well behind. You are well behind. Oh, who has, uh... <laughs> oh, oh, this is a good one. <laughs> Map the Dragon Railway says, It's behind you. Brackets, money in the model shop. You just left with a brand new locomotive. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Flint Hills Model Railway, Jeff Hammond says Rapido makes light strips. Um, ben Turlett says Train Tech do the carriage lighting strips as well. So there's a lot of companies on the market DCC doing that. DCC Concepts had uh, some interesting stuff, didn't they? They had, uh, you know, those little first class coach uh, seats uh, with the table and the lamp, and the lamp would light up. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was uh, an interesting little thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... But there's some great products on the market. Gray, spot the TARDIS. Uh, Graham MCK says, Good evening. Merry Christmas, one and all. Here's hoping we have a better 2021. And a massive thanks to Jenny and Zoe for keeping us all going with these live streams. Oh, thank you ever so much. We do um, our best. That's, that's mm. part of uh, why we've uh, kept going, even though we're, uh, sometimes we've got a bit, uh, a bit of the sniffles yeah. and a few sneezles. I think there was there. once when I had uh, had incredible indigestion or something. Yeah, uh, we had to call it off early, but, but we, we still yeah. tried because I think it's important that people don't feel like they're alone. Definitely, uh, absolutely. Tony Wright says, "I watch What's Neat every week. I saw your interview with Ken and Michelle, and it was great. Oh, thank you ever so much." Um, uh, John PW twenty two says, "Already been trying to count. I think fifty six, maybe." <laughs> um, uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. I'm, you I'm, haven't even counted, have yeah. you? Mark well, which Wilson, one am I counting? This, uh... Uh, the, 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 the coal train when it goes round then. Um, Mark Wilson says, Ken Patterson was a bit nervous to do a live show. I bet it's a big step. I suppose the time differences across America could be an issue. Well, they're in uh, Central Standard Time. Um, so I think a lot of people, um, I noticed from the stats, a lot of people do watch the Monday Club on catch-up. Oh, I wonder what you were pointing at. Um, a lot of people watch the Monday Club on catch-up. So the biggest thing about going to a live show is if you've not done stuff before that's live, it can be a bit nervous. But once you get used to get started, actually, in many ways, it's a lot easier than a pre-recorded video because you don't have to do any editing. Um, but, you know, my background was in broadcasting. I did radio for a very long time, which by its nature is like, imagine this without the cameras, you're just getting the sound. So I've had a lot of practice. 55 coal trucks mm. and two brick wagons. One at the front, one at the back. Langton Road counted correct, as did Ginty Steves. Yeah, 55. Ham Shackleton suggests LEDs too bright put a higher level of resistor. Yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> Manning 1956 says, uh, my Norton 360 is corona free, but generally my refrigerator is not. <laughs> 
Um, Jen's uh, trying her best not to laugh. No, no, I'm, I'm trying not to lose my place. Ben Davis says, I'm so happy I got, um, uh, as I got Oxford Rail 12 ton tank wagon Graham's Golden Lager. It's coming tomorrow. But it's going to have value weathering coming from TMC. Um, I, they do look grey, Ash. I haven't yet got any of the um, Oxford Rail tankers, but certainly um, it, it's something I'm really, really looking forward to, um, to reviewing at some point. Um, uh, just have a look. Um, yeah, that you can get um, different coloured strips. I think it does depend on whether you uh, are needing ones for uh, various different periods. Yeah, Fat Wallet Boy 2 has an interesting uh, point here, and it's certainly a concern if you're mm. trying for lights. Bleed through on some coach bodies can be a problem, but the effect yeah. is lessened if the brightness is reduced or the inside of the coaches are lined with PVC black or brown tape. Very much, and the same is true for uh, things like Scaledale and Scenecraft buildings. Quite often, what they actually recommend, and I've, I've had to do it before in the past, is you paint the inside with black paint. Uh, and it stops bleed through. Otherwise, you literally get a glowing building. It's quite a peculiar what effect. What would you say to not only painting the inside, but perhaps going further with miniature wallpaper and uh, other items within? So that when you put the light on in a building, you've actually got something to look at. If you look through the windows of that building over there, if you can actually see any of the interior, I'd be very impressed. I'm thinking more it's... of that one over there, because I would be able to see... Mm. Straight into those. Yeah, but yeah, and some people do. I've seen some very exquisite interiors, uh, actually. Um, uh, really great interiors. Actually, modeled. now I'm thinking about it, some of those signal boxes can have interiors, can't you they? You can get of... Pico do sell signal box interiors. So um, that might be some worth it. You I want to do that one, actually. That one there is screaming out for a signal box interior because yes. I can see that it's You would be able to see inside, and if you put mm. a light in after you've put the interior in, it should help it a lot. I must admit, when Pico sent that over for review, they also sent... They sent an all-gauge one, didn't they? Yeah, they sent the wrong scale. <laughs> they sent the, I mean, there you are, signal box interior kit uh, from Pico. Yeah, the, you had seen it somewhere. And it's a really nice kit, but they sent the O-gauge one and a double O kit. Um, I think you're going to end up getting an all-gauge uh, signal box. Yeah, I think I am. I think I am. Yeah, definitely. Right, um, right, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to scroll up to date because I am I so far behind. This, apparently the uh, Vic Freak scale scenes do house interiors that you can download. Uh, you, you can get um, stuff like that. Uh, right, hold on. <laughs> B2000 Raw Toys channel says, how's Covert Monkey Jenny, Hey. <laughs> 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 <coughs> oh my goodness, he also goes on to say he's getting a DCC G scale for Christmas. Ooh. My goodness. Um, that, I, That's actually, a bit of space. One thing I did, I posted up a link to a, uh, a video on a channel which I subscribe to, very infrequently puts up videos, but they're based in Australia and it's, a, it's, it's one of the most impressive garden G scale lines I've ever seen. And it's notionally with trams, but I've seen other types of locomotives running on it. And it is the most incredible video to watch. I've only ever seen it done with onboard cameras. I've never seen him wander around and actually talk about it or um, film it from like a person's point of view. But um, if you have a look on the Monday Club um, uh, Facebook group, I've put, uh, uh, put a link up to that. And it is an incredible channel and well worth going and taking a look at. Uh, Hythe Kent says the train ferry was from Folkestone, if I recall. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Mark Wilson says, uh, I've brought my, bought myself a Kerno Rail Class 41 warship D603 and have wrapped it. I must be mad. No, but it's only a few days to wait. Um, okay, guys, J94 is... Sorry, is can I is, just jump in? Yeah. This is the last call, if you want to put a uh, video to us. Send the URL to zoe at zoerobinson.com. And make sure it's one of your own videos so that we actually have permission to uh, show it. Yeah, don't share other people's videos. I, uh, I know be... people love to show off what others have done. And I have uh, <coughs> perfectly uh, uh, understand that, but we can't show it. Mm. Richard Swiderski says you can have a model layout of a model layout of a model layout. I have actually seen 
a working shop display in Dubbolo. It was in one of the magazines, and somebody they used they carved the train into a drinking straw, so it, it would look like a train was going around in a circle. It was turned yeah. very slowly from underneath, and they put that in the window of a toy shop on their model, and they worked out the scale that it would theoretically be the model railway in the shop window, and I can't remember what it was, but it's certainly very impressive. But don't forget to like the stream. Excuse me. Share the stream as well. Share us out on social media. Let other people know that we are live and dangerous and that everybody in the community is welcome to come and watch, feel a part of the Monday Club and to sit and enjoy and socialise with us all. Don't forget as well that we've got the Monday Club Facebook page where you can go and hang out through the rest of the week, post updates on your own model railway and comment on what other people have been up to and also keep up to date on the news and all sorts of bits and pieces that's going on in the world of model railways. Right, Gosh, uh, Ron Stanbridge, big hello to you. Um, Tony Wright says, My Athern Genesis Caboose has led has LED interior lights, which are great, plus sounds. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Peter Watson says, Hi, Jenny. One small correction, if I may. Sealink wasn't British, but it was a consortium. Ah, I didn't realise this. A British Rail, SNCF, the Dutch Zeeland Steamship Company, and Belgian Marine. I didn't realise that. Model Railway Noob said, I forgot it was Monday. Yep, that's <laughs> Christmas time for you. <laughs> And what David, day is it? Is it bins? Yeah. David Cook says, look at Tony Northeastern as well for scratch building interior and exterior. Yeah, he's been doing an amazing, uh, was it Darlington Station or something? Oh like my that? goodness, I just thought of something. Mm? What if someone could combine the steampunk uh, layout stuff with something like HeroQuest miniatures? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. I loved HeroQuest. The best was, thing about Hero Quest is was the bard. <laughs> no, the best thing about Hero Quest over my set was painting the miniatures. I love doing that. It's Emily, that video channel. I could I could never find anybody to play it with me. Nobody else was interested, so I ended up just painting all the miniatures. Um, Emlyn Jessen says, with that being a full coal train, does that make it a John Coal train? <laughs> 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 Um, uh, Keith Pointer says, I put you guys on my, uh, I, I think that's Instagram channel, but it's, it's, uh, I think it's a typo, it's Histo Prime and Chan Lu on Facebook. Uh, thank you ever so much. It's, it's always great to try and get ourselves out there for as many people as possible. Dazza 1977 says, the box vans on the other freight is 47 altogether. Humanicity Junction Model Railroad says, are you Jenny Kirk, the figure skater? No, I am not. Oh, Jenny um, wishes. It's a long-running joke because um, we basically have a link on the website that for those who are confused, yes, the American uh, Olympic gold medal winning figure skater's website is this way. Um, although we, it hasn't been reciprocated, we're, we're not directed to from her website. Well, uh, to be honest with you... It's probably like, who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, I don't think many people are going to her site looking for you. Hmm. Right. Um, okay, we have a lot of videos. So, so let's let's nice, go to. We've got, a, we've got a few more minutes. If you've got questions. Um. No. No. We. Oh. Uh, oh, um, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. Whoa. 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 No. 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 Yes. Oh my goodness. That is being very naughty doing that. That's unexpected. That is unacceptable. <laughs> That's unexpected. <laughs> Why did it do that? All of a that sudden. That was amazing. It just came from beep beep beep. Yeah, and it it's, was threatening to go it's down. Good. What are you doing? Oh my goodness, Jen! What is that? Uh, has that? Is that where it's come off? No, 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 no. That's just my oh my, my goodness, um, my scenic work that wasn't quite up to par some time ago. Uh, I need to redo that. To be honest with you, Ron Stanbridge says Gronks down here in the south are known as Jokos. Oh, Jokos. Jokos. I think. It's yeah. not quite the same, though, is it? No, yeah, I know what you, you mean. You can't jocko it up. It's gronk it up. Yeah, um, I've heard them called many things. Uh, 350s, shunters, um, rods, all sorts of different nicknames. You could rod said. it up. No, no. Um, unfortunately, yeah, we're struggling with the, uh, with the, the links. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just one of those... I think uh, because it's coming up to Christmas and... A lot of Google staff will be at home. 
they're probably getting hit with a lot of spammers trying to take advantage and they've just turned off links. Um, yeah, I think that that could be the case. I mean, we had one that came in earlier on, a spam bot. That Did was we? Trying, yeah, I got I nuked it straight away. And um, I'm pretty sure that it'll be one of those situations. They're coming in into the chat saying, oh, do you want to chat with me? Here's a link, that kind of thing. Yeah, and um, unfortunately, um, I suppose they run up to Christmas, they're trying to prey on people who are feeling a bit uh, alone and isolated. Yeah, which is uh, probably why Google's gone, no, we're not letting mm. that happen. Right, I'm just making sure. Uh, Human City Junction says, does YouTube acknowledge that links aren't working? I don't think they have. I haven't they seen never it. do. I must they'll, have... they'll mention it once it's finished. Hmm. But I'm just checking and seeing. Oh right. Um, also, I have to thank John Dawson. Uh, I just checked the PayPal.me link, and John Dawson has very, very kindly donated ten pounds oh, on PayPal.me. So thank you ever so much for that, and of course thank you everybody else who's donated during the stream. It's been an amazing stream for that, and I, really I do has. feel oh, humbled, my goodness, Jen. very humbled Jen. by you guys. What? It really has, and that's oh my word, like, that's extraordinary. You guys have been so generous that just when I've uh, switched over and seen just how much. Oh, wow. That, wow. Okay. Uh, do you want to do you want to answer a few more questions, or shall we move on to uh, um, the stuff? A couple more, and then if you want to get the yeah, first I'll, one I'll, queued I'll, up, I'll get it queued up. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Phil Metcalf says, "I first found your videos when I was in a hospital in August." Been off work and told to stay in away from people since then, so I never know what day it is unless Monday Club comes up on YouTube. I hope you're you're feeling better. Um, I mean, it's um, I, it's probably not the greatest way to find out about the Monday Club being in hospital, but I'm glad you found us, and of course, everybody always welcome, and just um, you know, keep safe, definitely. Um, Mike and Sue Putnam Junction says, when this is all over, we should have a big Monday club get-together. Definitely. I'd love to do it, actually. Probably at something like a, a model railway exhibition would be a, a lovely way of yeah, doing it. Yeah, where a lot of people would be anyway, basically. Yeah. Um, Blue Star Ted says, hello, Jennifer. Do you have any British commuter trains? Yes. Um, yeah, a few. Um, I've got... Uh, class 411, a class one, uh, several class 108, a class 101s, 401s, 402s, and an awful lot of coaches. Um, all varieties, but uh, there's about 300 coaches sat in the fiddle yard underneath here. I must go through and actually double check. We must check set what... up the camera in the fiddle yard so you can show it off. Uh, it's a bit difficult. I need to get some of those LED lighting strips oh, down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Manthony1956 says, Jenny and Zoe need more likes. Only about half the viewers have liked the channel. I should, I should Thank you for all of like us. Definitely, you should. But yes, don't forget, click the like button because it really does help the channel. It's free and easy to do, and you can share us as well. And if you haven't already done so, do consider subscribing to the channel. Right, um, do we have the first we video? We do. And this one, this first one was actually sent to us by Henry Van Week last week. <laughs> he sent two of them uh, last week. We kept one over. He says, uh, this is a South African Railways model. He models mm. them from between 1980 and 1990, when it was still steam, diesel, and electric motive power mm. all being used at the same time. So this yeah. should be Oh, just, just one moment. Um, uh, big hello to Gronkston Model Railway. And uh, also Mark Wilson says, I know we don't do, normally do politics, but this is quite funny. Apparently, if we go as far as tier six, Boris comes round to your house and ties your shoelaces together. <laughs> I like that. Well, at least someone's going to do it. Patrick Furlong says, um, uh, Jennifer always makes me feel welcome. And I don't do trains. I only know about Monday Club because Zoe and I are good friends, but you're always welcome. And that's it. Sometimes people just want a voice that just kind of, it's a bit like radio, you know, you, you, you have that bond with the, the presenter. You know, it's just, it's company. Yeah. It's somebody who can just interact with you. Exactly. And I, you know, it, that, sometimes that's what people really, really need. Yes. Um, right. Um, Ron Stanbridge, uh, thank you very much for dropping in. But uh, you have a great Christmas and uh, see you later. Um, 
Apparently Ben Tullett says at tier 10 you can't speak to anyone or look out the window. Right, but anyway. I don't do that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's no windows up here. Right, are you ready? Yes, this is Henry Van Wyck with Passenger Train Around My South African Railways Layout. Okay, brilliant. Because I was really intrigued by this last week. Yeah. Um, because uh, I hadn't really seen South African railway models. I really liked the um, the tender with the condenser. And do you remember that? And it looked like yeah, it was missing was side panels. Um, but it, it's uh, amazing to see. I love overseas layouts. Obviously, you know, if you're in South Africa, it's not overseas to you. But um, I really do like seeing railways from around the world. Uh, mm -hmm. And the South African railways do intrigue me. Um, They've got a very interesting look to them. Mm. I, I think we mentioned last week that we couldn't work out whether they were based on American style or what. I don't know. I mean, bear in mind, uh, if when you go back a bit further, a lot of the locomotives were built in British um, locomotive manufacturers, people like Bayer, Peacock, yeah. um, Dubs, um, uh, English Electric, Brush. Um, so even though they don't look UK in their origin, they actually are. Yeah, and uh, Ruben Ashwa has exactly what we were saying. Mm. Always nice to see trains from other parts of the world. Yeah, yeah. And I think as well, something is what I've said to, um, I think the first time I was interviewed by Ken Patterson on the What's Neat This Week podcast uh, was actually uh, that uh, looking at how railway modelers in other countries make their models is really great for finding out about new ways of doing oh. things. Now, um, perhaps not so much now in the days of the internet, but it's I love the, the ride on. Yeah, on that was good. But certainly... Um, I think it used to be the case very much that people go, but we've always done it this way. And it was a real eye-opener for me. Um, I started subscribing to Continental Modeler, which, despite its name, is where all the Canadian and US, um, Australian, that kind of thing, layouts uh, are put in print in, in the UK. Mm. And it was the new materials and techniques that they were using, which I really, really took on board. You have turned the sound off, haven't you? Just yes. To, right. <laughs> Blue Star Ted says in tier one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, right, seven, blah, 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 blah. they put you in prison with Boris and they make you watch Peppa Pig. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> this is fascinating. You can see it's still a work in progress, yeah, yeah. but the different shape, the different look, mm. it's all fascinating to me. Cooper and District Model Railway Club says there is a South African steam locomotive in the Summer Lee Transport Museum near Glasgow, was originally built in Glasgow. And wow. also, I mean, things like the... Um, That's a long way for them to travel afterwards, isn't it? Well, yeah, I, and also, I mean, it has to be remembered that the, um, the Garrett locomotives that are on the Welsh Highland Railway in Wales, uh, although they were um, brought it back to the UK from South Africa... They were built by, I think it was Bayer Peacock in That's Manchester. So I, I do like these ride on shots. It's a really nice idea. Oh, I like the, the those are the um, day pole crane kits, but they're really effective. Really effective. And I, I like the, you know, cause obviously when you've got another country with a different climate, you've got different styles of vegetation as well. Yeah. And it really does look and good. It, that's it. It looks completely different. Okay, yeah, shall we, Jay uh, Paul Anderson said North British as well. Yeah, that was the yeah. other company I was thinking of. Okay, let's um, move on to the next video because we've got quite a few to go through. Yeah, that was really good. Thank you, Henry Van Week, for sending that. I hope uh, I pronounced his name right. JJ Williams, 1984, welcome back. Uh, Shanghai 264359 says, I've recently been collecting Chinese trains. And yeah, actually, some of the Chinese steam locomotives are very impressive. Um, although, and for, they definitely have a different look to them. Mm, although, uh, certainly, um, it, it's easily forgotten that um, in China, up until comparatively recently, um, late 1990s, I believe, there were some UK built locomotives still there, which is rumoured to include a Robinson 8K and a Stania 8Fs. Um, wow. Okay, this one we've got is Chris's Train's Christmas Train. And this is the HO Christmas Train 2020, so oh, hit Chris's play. Trains. Look at that. Oh! Unfortunately, John PW22, uh, we can't post the links because YouTube really has turned that could. feature off. I really wish we could. 
Uh, the only thing we can do is put a post up on the Facebook page afterwards. I will do that, yes. So if you want to head on over after the stream and give it, you know, give it half an hour or so after the stream to give us a chance to put up the post, we will put all of the links into oh, a post on the Facebook group. Oh, this is like the Canadian Pacific festive train. Do you remember? Um, somebody did... Someone actually sent the, the thing. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, I loved it's it. It's disco It's so fun. Yeah, oh, this is nice. Oh, it's got Christmas trees. I love the way it's all lit up as well. It's wonderful. This is fun. Absolutely fun. Yes, this is what... Uh, oh, it must be a win... This uh, really gets me into mm. model trains. I'm not really interested in the locomotives themselves, but I love... The fun aspect and just enjoying Definitely. the hobby. Howard Pomfret says, hello, just managed to join. Um, hello to you. Welcome to the Monday Club. Everybody, of course, always welcome. Don't forget to tickle the like button and share the stream on social media as well. And if you haven't already done so, do consider subscribing to the channel. Um, Island Scenics asks, when did the link stop? I believe somebody said that um, somebody did a stream on Friday. And yeah. they weren't working then, so we don't know exactly. They were working last Monday, so sometime over the last uh, week or so. Yeah. What is the email to send them to? Zoe at zoerobinson.com. Which we can't put in the links, unfortunately. I'm going to try. But it's zoe at zoerobinson dot com. Uh, Levington Station says yesterday, apparently. Um, interesting. Uh, Digger Evans Model Railway, hi to you. J. Paul Anderson says, I don't like fun. I prefer serious modelling. Tongue in cheek. Oh, that's allowed <laughs> to, Jen. Uh, well, so, oh, sorry. We're seeing all the pick and the links to things that you've been yeah. watching. It's like, oh, apparently includes the stream that's going on right now. Oh my, well, actually, of those, the only ones that I actually watch would be Martin Zero and Steve Leto. Oh, well. Um, hello to you, Bang, got you, Junction yeah. Carl Braun. Thanks um, for that, Christmas Trains, that was fun. And Richard Swiderski says, pressed the wrong button and lost stream, back now. You were only supposed to click the like button. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, uh, the like button is not alt F4. Yeah. So, like we said, we're going to put a post up in um, Facebook uh, sometime after the stream, so you can follow those links and look at all of the videos that we're playing tonight. Um, but that's because at the moment, uh, YouTube linking thing is turned off. Hopefully, it'll come back in the new year because it was actually quite useful. Aha! We've got yeah. an interesting one from Skipsy Trains. Yeah, Who hello says, Skipsy Trains. Rails of Sheffield, 50th anniversary. Do you want yeah, I was talking, then you talk off. You're being horrible to me, and you've already taken my lightsaber. Yeah. That's not fair. But said, this is the Daypole closed van that Rails of Sheffield sent out to um, uh, a number of people. I don't know how many they sent out. I didn't actually ask John Barber about that, but I, I got one as well, and I was really pleased um, to... I felt very honoured that actually they uh, uh, gave me one. What? Do you what? see what I have to put up with, guys? I was trying to talk and explain what had been sent in the email with the link and Jen just decided to talk over it and explain everything even though I told her I was trying to say something she still jumped in the moment that I started talking again this rant has been brought to you by the Open University and the cupboard monkey uh, yes yeah, Skipsy Train says uh, with this coming Monday night club falling on the 21st of December the day before the 50th anniversary of Rails of Sheffield as such, attached is a quick link to a video of my Rails of Sheffield Golden Anniversary Wagon being shunted around. Excellent. Actually, I like that livery on the 66. It, mm. it does actually really suit it. Then he says, keep up the good work. Together we'll all get through the other side of coronavirus. Definitely. And that is true. And the Stick end together. is finally in sight, it has to be said. I hope um, so. Henry Van Wyk um, says, hi Jenny and Zoe, a very Merry Christmas to you and all the viewers. Much of South Africa's steam locos were built in the UK and in Germany. Um, yeah, that makes I mean, sense. Yeah. It's, it's easy to forget now that Britain doesn't make anything, but Britain used to be the foremost locomotive builders in the world. That is actually a really nice 66. I think maybe at some point I will have to buy myself a class 66. I don't do like um, post privatization. You did actually do a review of one, didn't you? But you weren't allowed to keep it. No, oh, that was a Hatton's loaned one of their uh, samples. Yeah. I do have a Silver Link liveried class 121, it has to be said, which is technically post-privatisation. 
Um, but um, I don't know, maybe I should invest in a class 66. It would certainly make reviewing uh, some of the modern image wagons that I get sent for review a lot easier and having a more appropriate uh, motive power. I'll have to have a look around, see what's available. <laughs> Copper and District Model Railway Club says, do it, Jenny, you know you want to. <laughs> yeah, and also it's... it's oh, there you are. Happy anniversary to Rails and Oh, Sheffield. brilliant. It's amazing to think that's 50 years. And that's from Skipsy Trains, if you want to search for them on YouTube. So, um, right. Now um, you've got a, a one here about uh, people with bionic arms firing arrows. Uh, people can't see that because I've, I've moved. Oh, that's all right then. Going to the dog says, hi all, apologies for the late arrival. I've been doing some modelling this evening. Don't worry. A model no. railway person is never late, nor are they early. They arrive precisely when they mean to. Yeah. What you need to know is that you're not late. We're all just very, very uh, annoyingly early. <laughs> um, Pete Clark says, says on the internet about the links not working. Ah, um, and Finley Gar Carden has uh, also sent an email. Uh, Model Railway New BR Standard 9F210, Leicester City Hythe. Blue Star Ted says, I'm watching on two screens because one has no sound as one has no full screen. Ah, Wonderful. Well, it feels an awful lot like uh, YouTube is messing up around. Uh, that's typical, place, isn't it? Uh, George Botterini uh, says the first American locos were built by Stevenson for John Bull. Yes, they were actually, and then shipped over. Wow. Um, Keith Pointer says I just won a class 58 off eBay, the cost of £24. Oh, score! Get in there, my yeah, well son. Well done. That is actually a really good price. And actually, the class 58 from EFE models. There's a part of me thinking that I should possibly, because they are currently available, maybe we should um what do people think should it be a class 66 a class 56 or a class 58 or something else that we should put that is very generous donations Thanks. oh hold on let me uh right press play okay this one is from shanghai 264359 Ooh. and he says uh an american special, special american train just for jenny oh is this because i was on what's neat this week New Athern Genesis Union Pacific SD seventy ACE Heritage Unit number one thousand one hundred eleven in honour of Union Pacific employees. There's some um, actually. There's another thing I could go for. Maybe I should get myself a uh, you do US. Want to, yeah. yeah. But would I get a diesel or a steam loco? That's the question. So um, that's a nice, a lovely box. box. And oh, I yes, this livery. This is one of the two liveries which really caught my eye, and this is one of them. Is it a G? No, it's not a GP40. Oh, it did say at the start, and I've my, my sieve like memory is. People are saying, get the class 66, get the 58, get them all. <laughs> wow, that is an amazing livery. That's what I mean, actually. That's one that uh, is a third genesis. I might have to go for something like that, it has to be said, because that is an amazing mm. model. It is. Although I wonder if it'd be out of gauge for Weir Yard. I don't know. I don't. Will it get through under the bridges? Ooh. Ooh, fully. <laughs> that is nice. Fully detailed cab. Yeah, with lights. Yeah. Here we go. Choo choo. Oh, I mean they do. They they just ooze power, don't they? They're. A... Oh wow! Have you got enough locos on that? Well, they might have gone a long way. They need to keep going. Oh, I like the wagons as well. <laughs> the freight Star cars. Ted says, "Get get the class one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, two, <laughs> <laughs> Nice work there, Blue Star Ted. <laughs> JJ Williams, nineteen eighty four, has thrown a curveball. So it's going to sixty eight. Um. All right. Ben Tullet as well says that's a cool looking livery. Um, oh no, come on, Flymo Chairman One. Don't time him out. He was only having fun there with yeah, the. Yeah, uh, we just need to. It was fine. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, um, sorry about that. Um, Penn Junction says, sent one about my Christmas project, only 10 seconds long. Just started it today. GWR advice appreciated, only 73 centimeters by 21 centimeters. Um, no worries. Um, we, yeah. What I would say is. Always think about uh, functionality. Do you want a shunting layout, just trains running layout, and Happy build holidays. up about that. Don't try and cram too much in, uh, in terms of track and stuff. That was a lovely uh, layout there. Thank you very much, Shanghai. That was great. The Dalek WHUFC says, I love C2C Class 387. 
Although 57305 Northern Princess says get a class 57. Les Hewitt says I've used Hornby and CMO decoders. Is it normal that the Hornby engines seem to be wired with forward and backward wires across? Sorry if you've answered this already. I got called away. No, I haven't answered it already, but I know what you mean. I think uh, certainly on earlier issue Hornby locomotives, I've got a class 50 that does that. It is like they um, got the motor wires turned the wrong way round. I don't know why. Uh, Leslie Gilpin says, talking of graffiti, um, uh, where are we? Talking of graffiti, I saw a GWR Class 800 covered in graffiti at the weekend. Actually looked better for it. Uh, and um, no worries. Don't worry about it. Fly my chairman one. Not a problem. Uh, Manthony, 1956. I forwarded the video of the CP Christmas train. Most Christmas trains in the USA were cancelled. The former Clinchfield CSX being the most devastating as it spreads joy and presents to the Appalachia. Finley Garden um, wants uh, you, uh, you to play their videos. They spent loads of time on it and they're only 13 and it's their birthday. So yeah, we will come to that as long as it's um, it's in the... Oh, what happened there? So I'm having to reply to uh, Paul Yesen who sent uh, a video in, but it uh, I can't play it. It just says video unavailable. Um, it may be the settings if they've not set it to publicly accessible. So um, um, there's, there's somebody will be getting an email just to say you need to check the settings on your video because we can't play it. Who's that? Paul Jessen. Paul Jessen. So we'll, we'll have to um, move on to the next one. Simply in excess. Jen, have you guys seen the Newcastle Central OO gauge that the guy in Canada is modelling? Station close to my heart has spent many a weekend there, late 70s to early 80s. I, ha I haven't seen that, no, but certainly Newcastle Central is a station which a part of me would like to model as well. Um, because Newcastle Central, if you've got the space, hear me out here, it's, it's got such great potential on the track plan. Because Newcastle Central Station, big um, through mainline station with lots of bay platforms, through platforms. Stabling sidings on the south side, but then you've also got the King Edward Bridge, the high level bridge, and then it loops around Gateshead MPD on the other side. You could also have uh, the Gateshead station in the triangular junction. You've got the line to Sunderland. You could have going off to a fiddle yard to come back in as if it's the line from Edinburgh, but then you'd also have the line out to Scotswood Bridge and onwards to Carlisle. Um, which you could then go through another fiddle yard and come back in as if it's coming from Tyne Yard. Um, there's so much potential for a self-contained layout that you could still just have continuous running trains around. Um, and there's also there was the goods station, which is gone now, but latterly became a track maintenance depot off the Scotswood line and came back underneath King Edward Bridge on the um, Newcastle Central side. And I think there was also a branch down to the um, dock side um, just by uh, Gateshead MPD from what I remember. I don't remember that line being there but I remember the remnants of it and the bridge under the main line. So a really interesting area. Um, right. And also, uh, the 1701, the file flyer says, don't forget the original Manor Station. Definitely, there's a lot of potential for modelling around there, it has to be said. Um, J. Paul Anderson, yeah, the lab modelling Newcastle Central is a Geordie and is now, I believe, living in Washington State, Seattle area. Ah, but they would still hark back to the to the uh, original Washington in time. Actually, no, is there some kind of rivalry if you're from Newcastle? If you're a Geordie, you don't like oh, people oh, from you, Washington. No, you don't. Washington's Newcastle. Ah, is it? We don't like Sunderland. Oh, right. The Mackers. Yeah, Mackhams. R yeah, right. So, what have we got here? Who's This one is the Orchard Line, and it's the Northern Lights on the Cornish Dales Line. Okay. Double O gauge. Ooh. And very nice Steam lighting. Steam and lighting effects. Yeah. Ooh. This is impressive. I like that. Is that with a, a dry ice machine? Something like that. That is pretty Could good. Be. Nice. Oh, that is well photo. It's really effectively done. That I does work impressed. really, really well. With the Hornby Pullmans. Yeah. 
They are great coaches, it has to be said. That's York Station. I like the lighting. Because normally when you do low light, it doesn't always turn out how you want it to. But that actually, it makes it look like it's outdoors in night time. Yeah, clearly they've spent a lot of time making sure that the lights worked before they filmed it. That's the best way to do Definitely. it. Definitely. Right, uh, yeah, Richard Wodurski says, nice effects. Peter yeah. Leyland, uh, sorry, John Walters. I'm very impressed by the lighting. This is impressive. Mm. Nice steady movement and as well. And Finley Carden says, thanks for sharing my video, Jenny. I am only 13 years old. Well, Not in that case, you've got a, a good career ahead of you in Definitely. the film and this stuff. Is this their video then? Yeah. And um, this is, you've got the lighting perfect. Because um, like I said before, filming in dark... <laughs> can often be really difficult. It just basically, you can't see anything. Well, not but just that, but uh, the this standard camera worked. will refuse to try and autofocus. So yeah. you do it all by hand while moving the camera. You've got it well done. This looks great. I like and the, that the, smoke, the smoke effect. effect really does work. And it's great loco, the P2. So really impressed. Yeah. So you might cock of the north. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So yeah, you might be 13, but consider a career in film. That was really good. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Well done. That was a brilliant Thank video. Thank you for sharing that. Um, right. Uh, Mark Wilson says, I like watching Marklin of Sweden channel. The host is really funny. Yeah, I think I think with a lot of these channels, having uh, a really good host does does really bring something to a channel. Um, so, um, yeah, I've seen some of the Marklin of Sweden videos and they are really, really good. A, a, a good host and good banter definitely helps. But when it all <laughs> fails, you can always come to the Munda Club. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> Cupboard Monkey in. Cupboard Monkey, Attic Monster. So, um, do we have any more? We have loads more. We have uh, six more. Okay, let's get the next one queued up. So, this one is from Tim Condrup. Always so, a good one. Uh, definitely. So, next video up from Tim Condrup. When it loads. Just waiting for it to load. Oh! Uh, uh, I like when Toby. Uh, hey, hold on. I haven't pressed the button. Put it back. <laughs> Jenny's been nasty to me again. Right, and press the button now. Now, stop this messing is, about. This uh, is Backman Toby pulling Backman Henrietta under brake van. I have to say, the, the Backman Toby, um, oh, I'm that not is sure nice that, looking yeah, I, I've got the Rapido J70, which is what Toby's based on, uh, but that coach, the Henrietta coach, I really like it, and also we're talking about the 50th anniversary of the Railway Children, and there's the locomotive from the Jenny Agatha version of the film. Oh, I love that little, yeah. uh... I like the Q1 on the turntable, I love the Q1, it's a really great locomotive. Oh, we got a derailment! We're Whenever you turn a camera on, something will yeah. derail, that's why we yeah. have so many problems up here. A film train always derails, it's uh, uh, 1701, the, fl the filed flyer, mm -hmm. says Ridley Scott started off filming ITV commercials. So everyone's got to start somewhere. Ridley that's... Scott ITV? I did well, you not wouldn't know have put that. them on BBC, would you? Well, no, no, I, th I thought... <laughs> Uh, I, I Everyone thought... starts somewhere. Yeah, no, if you I remember correctly, was... Michael Bay, he uh, his first uh, breakout gig was an advert for Got Milk. Huh. And it's actually oh. one of the best adverts for Got Milk as well. It's the one oh, where well. the guy is uh, he can't swallow his biscuit quick enough to uh, answer a call when it's on a, a phone in radio chat show. Oh, that one. But, um, that was brilliant. I like that one. I did. I really did. That Henrietta coach, I can see that having a lot of mileage when they get to the UK. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, the guy who, who did Mad Max Fury Road, he did Babe. <laughs> yes, you know, the he pig, did. The pig one. Yes. <laughs> I loved the honest trailer of that. Yes. The masterpiece in uh, Handcrafted Death and Destruction was brought to you by the director of Babe, Pig in the City <laughs> and Happy Feet. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm here, actually uh, Finley Carden says thank you. I used a disco ball and a smoke machine with floodlights. Yeah, I mean, you should be very proud really of that well. video. Um, you should be very proud of that video because that was incredibly well done. The lighting effects work. Yeah, you got that low lighting sort of nighttime outdoors look perfect, and, and the steady camera as well. Mm. Most it, it's not something that comes so easy to everyone. I had to work at it. Mm. When you're panning, it's so easy to just uh, 
think, well, I'll move in a little bit. We can't. Also, we've we got, got to stay steady. So we've got Canadian Rail Fanning says, I'm building Clapham Junction, but with the twist, it has overheads instead of third rail, means I can run anything. And with London Victoria as a non terminus uh, station. Excellent. And welcome into the chat. I think I, I, you probably posted before, but it's the first comment I've seen from you. And as I always say, if I miss people's comments, questions, I'm not I'm not ignoring people. It's just simply they come in so quick. I miss so many of them. So uh, if I haven't answered your question, then do after a, a, a little bit of a wait, do ask it again. OK, uh, we've got an, an actual update to a video from last week. You know that Ooh. bridge that you're all impressed with? Oh, yes, yes. Well, for, he sent it again because apparently uh, it might be something to do with a, a link or I've okay. certainly not. Hit it. play. We missed the first three minutes where he shows you how he built it. OK, hit play. So this should be fun. I, I'm intrigued because I was very impressed. Yeah, by that everyone kit seemed to be very impressed. So, so that's the original. Yeah. It's a bit of a bulky bridge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Oh my. Oh. Oh, this is oh high tech. Oh my goodness. That is nice. I mean, it's an amazing conversion. I mean, I couldn't believe it when he said that um, he used the Grand Suspension Bridge. Oh. So he's printing. Right. This is wow. Love a bit of three D printing. Yeah. Right. They look brilliant. Wired in. Oh my goodness. Okay. Eight wow. hours to print, but worth it. Right. That is actually impressive. I am very impressed. Do we want a 3D I... printer next? Well, yeah, where would we put it? Probably in the utility room. But I mean, I love these building videos because I love to see how people have done these amazing things. And I think in many ways, this is what is really helpful to other modelers. Yeah. I always say to people when people say, well, you know, I'm still building it. It's like, no, 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 no. That, that's really interesting. We want to see how you, you're building your model. Like that time when uh, someone sent in a video, they literally just started and they said, right, everyone, get in there and get into the ground up. They're showing you how they're building it. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need sometimes. Yeah, I mean, this is really when great. When it comes together, that is so impressive. I am amazed. Yeah. That oh, is... Oh, goodness. Wow. And it actually makes the finished bridge all the more impressive to yeah, see how it's now put you together. Know that it's it's been handcrafted. That is so good. Although uh, Mike and Sue put them junction ask if you have a three D printer, how much would it actually cost to make? Just curious. Uh, it does look amazing. The uh, uh, I think the main cost of a three D printer is actually the printer itself. It, the well, plastic, the resin. How the, much is the resin going to cost? It comes in massive uh, rolls. Yeah, no, but how far would a roll get? There's, there's a lot of resin in there. I think it's you're probably looking at um, at a guess. I'd say there's probably about two hundred quid's worth of materials in there. Possibly. Um, would I wouldn't be expect my it guess. to be that much. I really can't see it being that. But much. can you really put a price on something as exquisite? I'm as actually this? going to put a price on it. How much does how much does a three D printer plastic Cost. I love the back scene as well behind that really makes it. But that is an exquisite bridge. A roll of uh, plastic uh, resin for a 3D printer is £13. Yeah, but how much does it do? I don't know. That's the bit I don't know. Mm. But it's, it's less than the cost of a printer cartridge, if you think about oh, it. Oh yeah, well, I mean printer ink's the most expensive liquid known to man. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that your 3D printer resin is less than that. And then yeah, but, because anything is less than that. I mean, a bar of gold <laughs> costs Mark less. Mark Wilson says, could you 3D print another 3D printer? You can print the majority of it. The biggest issue you'll have mm. is getting the electronics. But yeah, yeah you, can, you can 3D print a 3D printer. Although saying, Grongston Model Railway says, a good 3D printer will set you back around £5,000. That used to be true, but I saw earlier this year two companies competing to create the smallest uh, mm. footprint cheapest 3d printer possible to make the prices will come down they were like i mean 400 yeah, i mean i remember when inkjet printers color inkjet printers cost like a thousand pounds yeah but now we get to you look this is the bit where we got to because you maybe that's that. what i should get maybe i should just go now nah, well, i almost surprised you with one of them the other day 
Did you? Yeah. How? I just, I had a sudden urge to buy it for you. No! I, I'm sorry to say I didn't buy it for you. You'll have to get no! it on. No! <laughs> I am actually quite tempted. I'll have to look in the piggy bank. You and... keep saying that you want one. And to be honest with you, the moment that they're all sold out, you will regret it. Mm, I know it, yeah. The same way that you would have regretted not getting that last, uh, what was it, the, the weird thingy. <laughs> you might want to narrow the, it down. The, the, the blue, uh, the blue one with the funny stripes on the front. Oh, the Deltic. Deltic, that's it. I'm thinking, yeah. what is it, a Blakey? I that's love that it. bridge. I'm just looking it's and so admiring well that bridge. It, it is really so is. well and done. And this layout is, is lovely too. So, um, and this is the point we did show this bit last week. So, um, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, Donkitz Model Railway says 3D printer filament is not all that expensive. Prepping the model for print is the difficult part. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. You, but the thing is, you would get used to it. You would test a few things, you would learn, and that's all mm. part of the process as well. Right, no worries. Look, I'm going to move on, but this is, this it, is but a, that was a so brilliant impressive. layout. I'm actually, I, I, I'm, I might have to make an executive decision, people. I know I said, oh, should I buy a 66? I, I'm going to check. If Rails have still got that purple A4 in stock, I might just buy yeah. one tonight. Thank you so much, Cheshire Lines, for sending that again. Definitely. I don't know why we didn't show that first, but I honestly think that we've accidentally missed it. But that was mm. so impressive. It was. Uh, I love that layer. In fact, um, it's definitely a channel worth subscribing to. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Cheshire Lines. Because I think when we, when they first sent us a video, they only had something like five subscribers. Wow! Um, and it was like, how has something this good not got um, that many subscribers? I think you'll like this one, Jen. Mm -hmm. The next one that comes up. It's uh, industrial shunters on a double O gauge micro layout. Oh, okay. Now, you've always been a fan of micro layouts. Why, why is the play bar? And see, this is what happened. This is what's happened last time, I'll tell you. It's getting confused or something. Yes. And that's why we didn't see the start of that other one. So I'm going to make a, a point of running it back. Yeah, we think we found the problem. So it's, it's all right. We're now aware of it. What is that? So um, this is from Poshing Tono 1. And it's industrial shunters on a double oil gauge micro layout. Are we actually <coughs> going to get this? It's yeah. decided that it's going to crash. No, there no, no. Are. There we are. And, and again, it's jumped to the end. Yeah. What? Right. OK. Uh, Here we are. I've swapped over. So I love the cows. Yeah. This... Oh, a Janus, but in um, it looks like BR livery. I'm assuming it's just weathered uh, Port of London Authority, but that's really nice. Oh my goodness! Mm, and the that's... Rail fan is going to try and build King's Cross Station. Really? But what time period? I don't the, know. In my opinion, the best time period would be late seventies, before the Hotel Curve tunnels uh, were taken out of use. Oh, um, a London Victoria station roof. Oh, right. Yeah, that would be interesting. What made you say King's Cross? Because someone else mentioned it. Right, King's right. Cross. Now, this is a micro that it's... Apparently, Ron B says the A4 is still in stock. So I'll have to, I'll have, to have a look what's in the if piggy bank is, tonight. If this is micro, then he's got his angles really good for the camera because it doesn't show Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. That's it. We're not seeing the edges, but... As you can see, I am always a big advocate. If you're going to build a micro shunting layout, always make sure you've got the run round loop because uh, it really does add to the <laughs> operational interest. Russell Fuel says, shout out to my parents, Mark and Debbie. They're always watching your archived stream as well. When you finally come across this one, hello, Mark and Debbie. So big hello to Mark and Debbie. And uh, uh, that's coming from Russell Fuel. So big hello. Oh. Oh, excuse me, a lot of gas in the coat. I hope you're really enjoying the stream. It's great to see you. Don't forget to tickle the like button, share us on social media, and also consider uh, subscribing to the channel if you've not already done so. Have you seen? Have a look at this. The way he's laid that grass, it looks mm. like it's trimmed and well kept. The entire thing looks yeah, like yeah. someone I mean, really loves this station. Well, the thing is, it's like industrial stuff. If it was like in an industrial complex, that's not uncommon to see that. I remember going around uh shop and paper mill and it, it's really strange because you have, see all of the grass is cut and then you've got unfenced tracks and a very neat um strip of um ballast but with no weeds in because basically the site's clearly got groundskeepers so they keep the track looking amazing 
because yeah. otherwise, it, it, you know, it would just look overgrown. Uh, I suppose it's like your yeah, calling card, isn't it? It's best yeah. foot forward. Yeah, uh, and there's a lot of places um, that were like that um, back in the day. So it's not uncommon to have really neat grass right next to your tracks uh, on certain industrial systems. Nice little shunting layout as well. Mm. Right. Um, Canadian Rail fan says, My yes. goal is to build every London station after Victoria. After Victoria, it's King's Cross. Biggest project will be Waterloo. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> but would you build it with Waterloo International or before Waterloo so, well, International? Well, he's saying and building the shard, so I'd assume it's a modern Waterloo. Fair enough. That would be mm. quite... I like the dry stone walling. That's pretty good as it well. Look, it all looks like mm. it's so well kept and loved yeah yeah it's and a there's, nice a, there's a there's a lot of functionality on this as well which is and another again, thing that yeah. we were talking about uh see there the, the run round loop again the run yeah. round loop yeah it's one thing that you were talking <laughs> about with that what was it uh the nwin's 3d with the yes where we little, reviewed uh, that layout yes mm. and how you don't need a huge amount of space to have fun with your trains yeah definitely Oh, and this is showing it. There's a lot of activity going on. I like the weathering on, on that van space. as well. That is well done, yeah. Yeah, that weathering really does look good. Actually, the uh, the Janus there, the Port of London Authority Janus, I think, it, or it might be the Allied Steel and Wire, uh, but the weathering on that's pretty nice as well. Mm. Right, yeah, uh, Peter Leyland says, Love shunting, you can spend hours. Um, Cooper and District Model oh Railway Club says, "Yeah, you have." Cooper and District Model Railway Club says the aluminium smelter at Fort William is like that now, immaculate. Yeah, um, quite often you find some of these industrial places have immaculate grounds, and if they're rail connected, that will include the rail connection. And in some cases, uh, I, I think it was um, ICI at Northwich. Even areas of the rail network that were disused, no trains went on. The ballast was still absolutely weed free, the grass was all tended, and you'd have tremendously rusty rails, but everything was immaculately kept. Oh, oh right. Again, it's, show, it's showing yeah. you all kinds. Oh uh, my goodness, it, there was a clip for my stand up routine. I did the best of. I think it just picks most of those at random because I've well, no it idea should what pick them based on some of the stuff that's good. Yeah, look, my thing. Right, oh, we've got um, Richard Swiderski, is this? Merry Christmas. Yeah, this is the Christmas themed one. So, uh, yes. we're going kind of up to Christmas. Uh, Christmas Grimble. time. Grimble. Mistletoe went fine. Um, everybody. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. We the three kings of Leicester Square. Selling knickers a penny a pair. They're fantastic, no elastic. All our bums are bad. <laughs> oh. I know, a it. I know a different version. It was like, we three kings of Orient are, one in a taxi, one in a car, one on a scooter beeping his hooter, following yonder star. Right, anyway, let's go over to this from Richard Swiderski. And it's Merry Christmas, everyone. I like your Santa. And a, a lovely little tree. Christmas tree on the platform. Buggle Skelly. <laughs> Buggle Skelly. Jeremiah Harbottle. Where am I in middle? Buggle Skelly. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's nice. I like that. That's really great. Thank you ever so much for sending that in. Canadian Rail Fences, it's about 75% done. I need to do the roof on Victoria. So I actually see so you're well on. My goodness, that is that is quite the feat. Ian the Train says, uh, Scenic Walling looks like it's from Javis Scenics. Um, I must investigate, actually. I thought it looked quite good. Um, I must investigate uh, that, then, if it is from uh, Javis Phoenix. Uh, right. Upwell and onward says, Big project to finish before Christmas is a micro layout for my little nephew. Going to be a transfer yard scene. Excellent. Always great to get the next generation into... Uh, into railways. Yes, yeah, um, so we have to make sure they engage with it. Mm, I, was, I nearly let slip something about what somebody might be getting for Christmas, but I just realised that that somebody does watch these, so I can't say. Yeah, you don't tell yeah. them to get a bag of coal. Oh, well, you know, it's like, you've got a coal fire. Be, be <laughs> like, ooh, just what we want. Okay, to. next up we have Gronkston Model Railway with the ooh. last update for 2020. Oh, Gronk, Gronk, Gronk. This is, this is one we've seen before with his very interesting electronic track layout system. Definitely. Which, I'm going to assume he's talking. Mm. 
because this is. Uh... Yeah, um, I'll just read through some of the comments. Uh... Whoa! <laughs> He's watching the Monday Club! Whoa! <laughs> Why are we on the Monday <laughs> Club? <laughs> Oh, I did, sir, uh, we uh, salute uh, you. If I had a cap, I would doff my cap at you. That is well done. <laughs> well done, sir. Ah, yes, it's this layout with the weathering and stuff. Excellent. So if we played the sound, we'd probably hear me on the thing going on about how much we were enjoying the uh, the video. Oh, nice. I like the lighting effects. It's a great layout. I always enjoy looking at the updates from this because, um, you know, with very little scenery, you still make it look great. You know, and, we've got the scenery on the back scene, but you know, not, cause, not just that, Jen, but the way that the scenery is all at the bottom of mm -hmm. the back scene and not up, it makes it look like this layout is high up. On yes, a, it's like on, a on an embankment or something. Yeah, yeah. But it, re I love the uh, the weathering on the track. Really, really nice. <laughs> Don't get some other railway says you can't threaten a steam rail enthusiast with a bag of coal. <laughs> oh, especially not if they've got a, a big stove. It's like, oh, that's just what I wanted, Santa. Oh, that's grand. Yeah, we were getting cold and everything. <laughs> oh, look at those lights. Yeah, yeah. This is nice. Yeah. Nice slow moving class thirty three. This was O gauge, isn't it? I seem to recall we were looking at it. It's um. It's O gauge, so it's a very impressive class thirty three. I do like the bulk on that locomotive. Hang on, what? That's O gauge. I think so. Yeah. Wow. I like oh, this I set like of controls. It. Yeah, yeah. I like that. That is nice. Why don't you have controls that are nice like that? Oh, you've got his handsets that look like something out of Star Trek. I can't understand what's <laughs> going on with that. <laughs> it's like you're operating your, your layout from a tricorder. I like the class thirty three. That is yeah, so I, I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't go for that livery myself, but certainly I like the locomotive. That is nice. Um Rule One Model Railways, <laughs> hi to you. Peter Leyland says if you like large layouts, Carlisle Mainline Citadel is good, featured in the railway modeler, thirty metres long. I built a lot of the buildings and bridges on it. Yes, I do remember that one. It was a great layout. I've got to read this from Canadian Rail Fan. What a way to spoil your Christmas. My <laughs> wife has been getting me an HST, I think, because she has been on Colonel Model Centre from the bank account statements. <laughs> You're not meant to look in December. <laughs> Actually, well, you, you know she's getting you something good then. <laughs> yeah. Unless Colonel Model Centre also do a line of socks, then you're getting a decent present this year. Ooh, a bit of a zip on that locomotive. I like this one as well from... Uh... Ben Tullis says, I got the layout idea from one made by Corporate Layouts. They produce some great looking layouts for Hornby, or for lazy people who don't want to do any messy work. <laughs> actually, yeah, some of the uh, Hornby layouts have been pretty good, actually. Yeah. Right. And uh, yes, Mark Wilson has <coughs> the best advice possible. Canadian, uh, mm -hmm. you have to look surprised when, she, when you open your present. Up well and onward says, right, i got to go. Uh, last day at work and got to tidy up the yard. Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, Merry Christmas to you. And Merry you Christmas. Take care. And uh, we should be back on next Monday, which will be at the other side of Christmas, but still in 2020. And by then, Jenny may even have sobered up. Yeah. Although there's no guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wicked Insanity says, I need socks too, but I'll go sockless for some more train stuff. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, right. Um, oh, let's move on for the next video. Uh, we got many left. No, we are only they, have are they two still, left. Are they still sending them in as fast as we're watching them? Well, I've no. noticed the time. We've nearly uh, we're nearly at half an hour past. But uh, yeah, still Finley got... has Finley Garden sent a second one in, but we only show one from people per night. No worries. Um, so we'll keep that for I, next I, week. I, I am aware that we're 25 minutes over okay, the time. This one... We've still got 284 people in. Don't forget, if you haven't hit the like button, do tickle the like button. Yeah, and again, someone sent us... Uh, it's an attachment and it stops working. We can't, we we can't, can't do it. it. You've got to send the URL to somewhere like YouTube. We can't actually download a video it whilst we're on it the will, stream. It will just stop the live stream because yeah. of the connection issues so, we have. Really sorry so about really that sorry pen, pen junction. junction. Um, but uh, if you're able to upload it, say, to your YouTube account and then send us the link. Uh, but it'll have to be next week now because we are quite yeah. over the uh, the time. Um, what was I going to say? 
I'm starting to get a dry mouth now. I've been talking now for two and a half hours. Do you remember when we used to do a three hour Monday club and it was a killer? And that's, this is why we start. I don't mind every now and again. We'll go over because it's a bit yeah. fun. We're all having fun. Hmm. Uh, Mark Wilson is off. It says, good night all. Merry Christmas. Can we have an unboxing of the loco you purchased? Of course. Yes, it'll be It'll probably be more than one, actually. Um, okay, our final video. Prajyot Ran Ranjan says, uh, I am from India. I envy you guys celebrating Christmas. And it's the secret Santa that we like uh, and the food. <laughs> but the thing about Christmas is that the religious aspect is is it's actually option. optional. <laughs> yeah, you can do Christmas even if you're not religious like us. Um, Our final ooh. one isn't a video, it's a picture. It's from Logan Clary, and he just says, uh, Merry Christmas and a gronky New Year. Oh, excellent. But that is really nice, that's actually. That's a lovely little gronk. Uh, that's not a gronk. Well, it should be. That looks like uh, it's actually, yeah, a Class it's 43 a gronk, HST. Or a DVT. I can't quite tell on that monitor. Uh, but look, thank you very much for that. Um, thank I, you, I everybody. Like it. It, it looks a bit uh, snowy. Um, right, we're going to be... Um, we're going to round off the stream now. But look, thank you very much, everybody, for sending over the videos. Really enjoyed looking at those. There's some great nice. videos there. Really pleased with that. Um, so uh, stay tuned to the Monday Club Facebook page. We're going to put up all the links on there for you uh be sometime it might in the take next... me a bit of a time but i'll do it yeah it'd be like, sometime in the next hour so because youtube's turned the linking I system will, i will make a page on your website jennifer-kirk.com and link that to the uh, monday club uh, thing otherwise uh it'll facebook will pick one url and not show the rest so if i do yeah, that yeah, then okay, they'll okay. all just be on one page and you'll be able okay to well look see you do that you sort it and then post a link to the page onto the monday club facebook page right okay guys we're um, gonna have to go i'm gonna have to go um, so take care good night take care bye